Okay. Hello, Hello everyone. Everybody. I swear I just asked if Doug was ready, and then immediately, as soon as I transitioned, no. he was like, oh, I have something I have to write down right now. No, no, because, <laughs> and, and it's so funny because it's one of the questions, too, but for some reason, I just didn't want to wait. Somebody was like, oh, you're going to do a Disney Semper? What about Bob? I'm like, yeah, I really want to do that. I'll write that down before I forget. So uh, the answer to that ahead of time is yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, fantastic. Love that. Um, but yes, hello, everyone. Welcome to Chatting with Doug, where I swear he's not going to be distracted and write down a, on a piece of paper the whole time. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I have a kitty. What are you looking at, kitty? Let's go take a look. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> No, Doug, please. The people need you. They need you. They're asking questions that need answers that only Douglas, Doug Walker can stay. give them. But I don't want a chaplain. You will stay. All right. All right. <laughs> Thank you, chaplain. God. He, he always keeps me in line. <laughs> he does. He really does. Um, anyway, welcome to Chatting with Doug, um, where obviously you ask the questions and he gives you some answers. Um, we are going to go over the rules in just a moment. I see that we have a level three hype train that just chugga, 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 happened. Chugga, chugga, Thank chugga, you chugga, all chugga, chugga. so, so much. We appreciate it. Um, but before we get started, I did want to mention that uh, Doug is going to be on for the next couple of weeks. Um, he's on a well-deserved vacation soon. We, we do still have stream on Friday, so do come back on Friday night again. Um, so we do still have stream on Friday night and the rest of the streams will still be going on, but um, this chatting with Doug and his Friday nights will not be going on for the next couple of weeks, okay? All right. But, so but this you... Friday, we still got it going. We still got it going this Friday. Yes, yes, we do still have it going this Friday evening. Um, but if you have your questions, ask them now, okay? <laughs> Um, but let's get to the rules so we can get to these questions. Um, first and foremost, we give priority to the bit messages since that is some real world money spent. Towards the end of stream, sometimes we have time for highlighted questions, but do save your highlighting for the end of stream. If you do it now, I can't scroll back up and see it. Also, highlighting a question does not guarantee that we are going to see or read it. Um, please do not repeat yourself over and over again in, in chat. You can get timed out or even banned if you're going to continuously do it. Um, we do get behind on bit messages sometimes up to an hour behind it is not necessary for you to repeat bit messages um it is very very rare that we actually miss one of the bit questions we have a list just understand that there is a delay um watch the length of your questions the longer it is the faster i have to read it and the more likely we are to lose the point and we do not have time to repeat it um that does also include part messages please 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 if you have to do a multi-part question limit it to like maximum three same kind of thing happens where we just start losing the point and it, it just becomes a bit much and a bit long um i've forgotten this newer one for the past couple of streams but please limit yourself also to one question per message it doesn't feel fair if someone comes in and is like hi i have four questions um you know just try to keep it a one-to-one -one ratio okay we want to try to keep it fair as fair as we possibly can all right. Um, no spoilers, please. Not everyone has had a chance to watch the latest and greatest movie or show or whatever it is. I out have. There. I saw Godzilla minus one. I, I don't need to see anything else for the rest of my life. <laughs> for the rest <laughs> of your life. <laughs> you were just so right, Heather. You were so right. It was unbelievable. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. Could you say that again? You were so goddamn right. Oh, yes. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> no. Everyone was already saying, oh, go see it, go see it. And, uh, like, just when the stream was off, you're like, no, Doug, really, you gotta fucking see that. <laughs> and you were <Seriously>. right. <laughs> um, amazing. Uh, did I, did I hit them all? I think I hit them all then. We, oh, uh, maybe check see if your question has been asked already so you don't get, uh, you know, the repeat and the table scraps and stuff like that. Oh, right, right. You're not gonna get in trouble for that. It's just that, you know, we feel bad. Mm -hmm. That's all. Yeah. All right. Cool. Great. Awesome. Let's get to it before Chaplin's adorableness ends the stream with how cute he is. Um, that Disney okay. nerd, thank <laughs> you for the hundred bits. Hello, fat Dougbert and Heather. <laughs> how are you lovely folks doing tonight? Uh, you know, I'm on vacation, so I don't mind being called fat. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm gonna plump up a lot, man. I eat a lot while I'm on vacation. So yeah, I'm definitely, when, when you see me, uh, in whatever, the first NC of like February or something like that, I'm just gonna be like, Whoa! 
Oh, I'm gonna miss. I'm. I'm gonna be. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait. Nof Nof, thank you for the hundred bits. The Nintendo DS is about to turn twenty years old this year, and I feel like the guy Ooh. from the Last Crusade. Oh, oh, hey, what, was there more? Is that nope, it? Just that's it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was gonna say, like, is there a line or something? Like that? I'm crazy. You're crazy blurry. What blurry. The fuck? What the fuck is that? Oh, the oh there you are. All right, is that better? Yeah, Over yeah. Here? There you are. Yeah? Okay, there you cool. are. You're there. Um, you know, it, well, I, I can top you for how old I feel. Uh, I constantly confuse the DS and the Switch. <laughs> That's how old <laughs> I my, my stupid brain is. So anytime we said DS, I'm like, what? No, didn't that just come out? Like, it's not even 10 years old. I'm like, oh, that's the Switch. Yeah, so it shows you how on top of that I am. <laughs> Alexander, thank you for the 100 bits. Have you watched the holdovers, holdovers yet? And if so, what do you think? <laughs> not yet. Uh, it is on... Um, Amazon though, and we oh, will it? probably uh, check it out. We did see, uh, oh, what the hell is it called? Saltburn? Was that what it's called? Oh, Saltburn, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, that, that was pretty enjoyably bonkers. I like that. But uh, yeah, holdovers, uh, I still gotta see. At Movies, thank you for the 100 bits. Good evening, Thin Douglas and the Walker Kids. <laughs> How are you? Uh, good. Again, not gonna be thin for luck. <laughs> Alexander, thank you for the 100 bits. What are your thoughts on the taking of Phelum 123? Oh, tell him, uh, tell him, I don't, I, I forget how it's pronounced. It, it's pronounced some weird way. Um, but, uh, I've never seen, I heard it's really good. Uh, but I have not seen it. Uh, I should probably check it out. Alexander, thank you for the hundred bits. What are your thoughts on the Poseidon event adventures? Oh, guys, the original, uh, I love, um, it's one of those fun movies where you can watch it as a kid and just be so into oh my god this is so intense it's so good and then we grow up it is a little campy which kind of makes it even more fun but uh but still really intense and really clever uh no i thought it was uh uh really good movie that, that's good that, that's like when i think of like a classic disaster film that's one of the first ones that uh, comes to mind at movies thank you for the hundred bits did either of you watch echo yet or percy jackson for that matter no but they're on my lists i know i still haven't watched what if i keep forgetting that that happened <laughs> um i've seen a little bit of percy jackson i'm liking it uh, my wife said she wanted to watch it with me though so we're trying to space that out but now she wants to watch a billion so now i'm like okay well can i watch percy jackson then i don't know and then rob's pestering me to watch the show body so there's just too many things too many things Job Kazobi, thank you for the 100 bits. Happy New Year, Channel Awesome. Wishing you all a good year. Oh, thank you so much. Back at you. Alexander, thank you for the 100 bits. What are your thoughts on Save the Tiger? It's the film that won Jack Lemmon the award for Best Actor. Uh, really? That, that's, that's so funny because there's so many, like, great movies that he's done and everything. Huh, there's a lot of charities that pop up when you type that in. Ah, oh, there's the movie. Um... <laughs> I've never heard of this movie. This one of Best Actor, that's hilarious. Okay, well, I guess I should check it out because he's a really good actor. Dilbom, thank you for the 100 bits. Thoughts on The Holdovers? I <laughs> uh, haven't seen it yet. Really, really want to. Again, we're, we're just uh, trying to space out our Paul Giamatti viewings, I guess, because like I said, my wife's only wanted to watch Billions. I've already seen Billions, but uh, yeah, it's... Um, Maybe that's how I can convince her to watch the movie. I can be like, well, but the, you know, he's in it. So yeah, maybe hopefully this weekend I'll see it. Alexander, thank you for the hundred bits. What did you think of this week's episode of Bob's Burgers? I actually didn't know they were going again. I thought they did like a little break. I didn't know they were back on. Uh, so I have to uh, check that out as well. Man, and my answer to everything is I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. I'm so sorry. My, uh, movie Mike, thank you for the 100 bits. What parent figure character do you like more? Hop Pop from Amphibia or Etta, Ida, I don't know, from Owl House? Uh, probably Ida. Uh, I do really like Hop Pop a lot, but Ida's just a little bit more like, I, I like the cynicism. I like she's kind of a cheat and stuff like that. I like all that stuff more. Smash Ultra, thank you for the 100 bits. Can you make a video about villains? Like, for example, cartoon characters like Mojo Jojo, Lord Hater, and Aku are villains, but they do something more normal villains don't do. So often, like, go to the store, order food, and even hang out with their hero enemies like normal people. But then they go straight to world-destroying villainy. Reminds me a lot of Sam Sheepdog or Ralph, Ralph Wolf being best friends off work than enemies at work. Um, you know, I feel like that's a video for is someone... I. I'd be shocked if a YouTuber hasn't done that yet. You know, just made a show about analyzing, like, villains from, like, you know, classic shows and stuff like that. Um, 
it, it's a good idea. I just don't think it's my thing. Um, I like reviewing just a whole movie as opposed to like, you know, the career of a character. Usually I, I like doing like the career of an actor or something or even like a franchise. But uh, in a one character, it's just a, it's a little too specific for me. But I'm sure there's other YouTubers uh, who have done that. Maybe even on Mojo Jojo. At movies, thank you for the hundred bits. Top three Christian Bale performances. Doug first, then Heather. Oh, <laughs> uh, hmm, man, I got you know that's another one of those actors where it's like he's so good at playing all these parts. I'm like, yeah, okay, which ones did he do? I don't think I've seen some of the uh, the more famous ones. Like I didn't see, um, uh, oh, what the, Ch uh, I didn't see Cheney. Um, and man, I am fun. Did I type in Christopher Bale? Oh my god. <laughs> Christian <laughs> Bale, what the hell's wrong with me? Okay, um, I like his Bruce Wayne, but I I don't think like I don't know if I would put that up there. Um, hmm. I love him in American Psycho. He is pretty fun. Yeah, he does a good job in that. I feel like I'm trying to think of one where I was just like, whoa, that was like, you know, that 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 like shook me up. You know, what I mean, like it was so good. Prestige is pretty good. Ooh, love Prestige. Um, let me see. I feel like there's like an obvious one. I'm just, I forgot he was in Shaft. Oh, obviously Newsy. Come on. I I mean, had, that's, that's how I fell in love with him, Doug. Okay, oh I God. love Newsy. That's how every Newsies. girl fell in love with him. <laughs> it's terrible, but I love it. Uh, boy, he's not in as much stuff. as Like, he's in stuff, but it's like, I feel like I was missing like one obvious one. It's like, uh, maybe I wasn't. What about something uh, like Ford v. Ferrari or Vice? You see, that's a, that Vice, that's the movie I was thinking of. Ah. Uh, I haven't seen that <laughs> <laughs> um, wait, did I see The Fighter? I think I saw The Fighter. I, I remember that being pretty good. So, yeah, there's a couple for you. Great. Um, at Movies, thank you. Oh, I just read that. Sorry. Dev the Wiser, thank you for the 100 bits. What do you think are the best religious movies? Um, Prince of Egypt. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, it, it's such a... It's such a broad question because you could be like, honestly, you could do something like that, like a religious epic, but then you could do like a smaller film, like Lilies of the Field is like an unbelievable movie. That's just about a dude like building a church with these nuns and everything. Um, yeah, man, I don't know. I, I do really like Lilies of the Field. Um, I'm trying to think of like, man, it, it, it's rough. It's hard to name like that. Like Ben Hur jumps. To mine just for what epic scale. Yeah, uh, uh, Ten Commandments. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm sure there's others. I'm trying to think of ones that are like a smaller scale, you know, like personal stories and stuff. And I I, I I, know there's a ton out there, but I'm blanking on I'm just thinking of the big epics right now. So, um, yeah, but there's, there's a couple for you. But, man, the best ones, I don't know. I, that's like saying just what's the best comedy. It's like so broad. Or the best drama is just so broad. Uh, you have to narrow it down more, I feel like. Steel Bomb, thank you for the 100 bits. Favorite character and favorite moment in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? Um, I like Brad Pitt's character a lot in that. I, I like he kind of like, he kind of goes with the flow, but he doesn't just, you know, take all the shit. You know what I mean? He knows his job is to kind of take shit, but he will give a little pushback. It'll get pushed back in a really charming way. And uh, favorite moment? Uh... You know, maybe just the ending, because uh, I so didn't see that coming. I didn't know what the film was really going to do or what it was going to be. And when I got there, I, I kind of scratched my head. I didn't know what to think about. And then just the more I let it sit, the more and more I, I really, really liked it. And I don't know. I like a film that kind of challenges me and just makes me sit on it for a little bit. Think about it. Uh, think on it for a bit. Joel B., thank you for the 100 bits. Thoughts on the film Purple Rain? Just watched it for the first time yesterday, and boy, was it not what I was expecting you know it's funny because i've made some jokes about it i've never actually seen it i should probably actually sit down and watch it because i do like prince um i just kind of heard it was like growing up i heard it wasn't that great but then i'm hearing like apparently it is good and it's very unique uh so i, I should just finally sit down and well i just got the assumption it was something like cool as ice like maybe not quite cool as ice because it's prince but i'm like some sort of weird ego project or something and uh, a lot of people say that's actually pretty decent so i should give it a chance on a joker thank you for the 100 bits pop quiz hot shot for 100 bits what was the first movie to be rated pg-13 maybe you can review it on that basis you know I used to say it was Temple of Doom, but apparently that's not correct. Uh, 
I, I guess it was another movie. Temple of Doom was like the second one, I think. I think they decided to make the rating after watching that movie. But then they gave it to something else first, something like that. I don't know. The, the history is more confusing than I thought. I always thought they saw Temple of Doom said, we don't know if it's an R or a PG. Let's create a whole new rating. Uh, but I guess that's not the story. I don't know. I got to... I'll, I'll say Temple of Doom, but I don't think I'm right. Um, you are not correct. I was given the right answer. Red Dawn? Uh, it is Red Dawn, yes. Okay. It's Red All Dawn. Right. I got I to gotta figure out the story of that, because for years I always heard Temple of Doom. Temple of Doom somehow, like, played a big part in it. But, uh, yeah, I, Red Dawn, well, welcome. That Disney nerd, thank you for the 100 bits. I started my playthrough of the Arkham games recently. Today I beat Arkham Asylum. I thoroughly enjoyed the game. The gameplay was so smooth. The combat system was amazing. There are only two problems for me about the game, which I'll tell you in another bit message. Okay. Uh, I mean, I did the uh, the first one. I really, really like that. We'll, we'll do more at some point down the line, too, because uh, I think people wanted to see more of them. Job Kazobi, thank you for the 100 bits. Doug, loved your new NC tonight. Did you like Keenan Thompson on all that like you do with him on SNL? Uh, not as much, but I think that's kind of by design. It's supposed to be the kid-friendly version of... Uh... You know, it's funny because it, it was mostly, you know, black kids. Uh, when we were kids, we always used to say, oh, it's like the kid version of In Living Color. But it's really not. It, it's the kid version of SNL. I mean, it's pretty straightforward, uh, you know, sketch comedy. Um, but uh, he was good. Everybody was good. You know, the writing actually wasn't that bad. For what it was, it, it's a perfectly fine show. Um, but SNL, I mean, you can grow it up. You can experiment more. You can, uh, you know, really go. Uh, well, And that's a nice thing, too, with all that. He had the training there to then go to SNL and just be even better. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, you can't get better training than that going to SNL. Alex, the animator, thank you for the 100 bits. So, Doug, you remember in your NC review of Wacko's Wish where your friend Jim said Quantum Leap was one of his all-time favorite shows. Do you know if he has ever seen the Revival series currently on NBC? <sighs> Man, we talked about it, and I can't remember what he said. Uh, I can't remember if he checked it out or not. We, we did bring it up, and I'm totally blanking. Uh, next time I see him, I will ask. Dev the Wiser, thank you for the 100 bits. What are your thoughts on Oswald the Luck Rabbit? Um, that dirty thief. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, I mean, what for, are we talking about the original cartoons? Are we talking about, like, new ones that they've done? Which I think is just, isn't that the ultimate revenge for Disney to buy the character back and then make their own cartoon. I mean, what, what great vengeance. Um, but, um, I, I, I mean, from what I've seen, it's, it's fine. Um, I, I don't get as much an identity out of them as like Mickey Mouse or anything like that, but, uh, yeah, they're fine for what they were. Tamara makes her entrance into chat by just saying Oswald is a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, Tamara, I love you so much. Um, Spike, thank you for the 100 bits. With the 40th anniversary of the first movie and the fourth installment coming out this year, do you think you would do the Beverly Hills Cop franchise? Uh, you know, I, I said this before. I actually have never seen one all the way through. Or let me put it this way. I've never sat down and watched one all the way through. It was on TV so much. And I would watch it, you know, just in chunks and stuff. And I like them. You know, I like them fine. But, uh, yeah, I should. That's another trilogy I should just, like, force myself to sit down and just just watch them all uh, in order. Because I, I, I'm not going to lie. That new trailer, it looked pretty badass. I was kind of like, oh, another Eddie Murphy trying to get the magic back again was this the eighth time or whatever, but the trailer was pretty badass. So, uh, yeah, I probably will check those out. Um, tap it. Thank you for the hundred bits. I know we just started the new year, but it seems your Disney Sim Disney December list fills up earlier and earlier with each passing year. So I'm going to request recess now to get on the waiting list for Disney December 2024. Um, I have to, I have it on the list of like future possibilities. It's, um, it's more kind of what other shows pop up from Disney to uh, like somebody recommended Fillmore. And I was just like, Oh, I know that kind of has a following and it's short. It's a short series. So like, that's kind of in the lead right now. But, uh, I think between that and like uh, proud family, uh, those are the two. I think a lot of people have said, uh, what are your thoughts on that? And it's like, I should see them. Cause I know a lot of kids grew up with them and, and kind of helped define them and stuff like that. So, uh, I'll do my best to get around to it. At movies, thank you for the 100 bits. NC for DreamWorks Sinbad. It's a double whammy with both Catherine Zeta-Jones and Michelle Pfeiffer. 
Yeah. <laughs> so um, please <laughs> contain yourself. Well, she's like, have you seen this movie? The, no. The Pfeiffer is first of all the animation on her she's like this goddess that can just I can't even describe her it's like some of the best animation you've seen she can just shape shift and be anything it's like if like the genie from Aladdin was like seductive evil and sexy <laughs> <laughs> like it's real I didn't know I wanted this uh and she does the Catwoman voice the whole time and it's it's pretty crazy. <laughs> it's it's pretty something. Rest of the movie's okay, um, but uh, that's worth it for that. Uh, maybe um, there's a couple DreamWorks movies. I was like, yeah, I should get to that. I should do that, and um, yeah, there might be a following for that. Might be an idea. Dill bomb. Thank you for the hundred bits. Thoughts on Boogie Nights? Oh, I like it. Um, if somebody had a funny uh way of explaining it because I thought the same thing when I saw it even though I, I really liked it uh it said oh yeah I too really liked uh Goodfellas in the porn industry and I'm like yeah it had that vibe uh you know it, it's you could argue it's saying something different and doing something different but just the feel of it it, it very much is like that Chaplin farted man oh my god <laughs> oh it's that fuck Oh shit! Okay, I'm am just gonna talk like this a little bit. Uh, yeah, it's it's really really good if you haven't seen it. Fuck, <laughs> Chaplin, oh, please. Fuck. Oh, Ooh, Jeremiah. I'm got You always have to hold the pet to you know when they do something bad. You gotta hold him and say no, no. So I'm gonna hold him to himself. No, bad. Look what you did. You did that bad. <laughs> Show him himself. Fantastic. Ooh, Jeremiah, thank you for the 100 bits. How about a Disney Sember for What About Bob? Uh, you know, I literally said that at the beginning. Yes, I'm like, oh my God, I, I really do want to talk about that movie. It's an interesting movie to talk about. So uh, yes, I will. Joel B., thank you for the 100 bits. Thoughts on the film Easy Rider? Um, I don't think I'm the right audience for it. Uh, I, I guess I really, I thought I had an idea what it was going to be. It kind of starts off, that way and it just goes I, I this doesn't mean it's bad but it just goes so 70s <laughs> where it just kind of abandons the plot for a little bit and goes all trippy and, and i usually like that stuff but um I, I don't know maybe i gotta watch it again i i, I thought it went um I'm not going to say it started off straightforward, but it just goes so abstract and so, you know, uh, trippy in kind of like the last, and not even last, they're like in the middle. Um, it, it was hard for me to kind of get into it, but uh, it, it's good. It's a good film. And, you know, it's got interesting stuff to say. Uh, the way it's the way it says those things, weirdly, I don't know if I'm a huge fan of, but, but it is very good. Job Kazobi, thank you for the 100 bits. Since Ahsoka Season 2 has been officially announced, I hope you do another Disney Sember on the next season. I loved your opinion on the show, and I couldn't have agreed more. Yeah. Really? They are doing a Season 2? Okay. I, You know, because I like Season 1 fine. I don't know if they have the momentum for a Season 2, though. Um, but at the same time, I do kind of want to see what's going to happen with, like... The, well, especially not one of them instead of the Inquisitors, but uh, yeah, are they going to recast them? Are they going to find a way around that? Uh, I, I like the other one there. I thought she had some great crazy eyes and stuff like that. So, uh, and, and remember too, if anyone didn't like it, I mean, Filoni's weakest stuff is always the first season of something. So they only get better. Dev the Wiser, thank you for the 100 bits. What would you rate Batman v Superman 2016? What would I rate it? Uh, maybe... I didn't hate it quite as much as everyone else did. I say maybe two stars, something like two out of four. That's Disney Nerd. Thank you for the hundred bits. One, the game didn't do a very good job at helping me figure out where I had to go. I find myself getting lost a handful of times to the point where I had to watch a playthrough to figure it out. Two, the story feels like it just abruptly stops. Like, yeah, you fight Joker, the villains get locked up, and that's it. Yeah. No, that, I mean, because that's the first one it's talking about, yes, right? Yes, yes, I yeah, was the first um, one that you played. I actually couldn't believe that was the ending. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. what? We were all waiting for that. <laughs> yeah, I, I was just like, I, I could for a game that was like that good and had such a, a great build up to that villain, <laughs> I found out it is a very famously bad final boss. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't want to hype you up too much, but Arkham City is... Great. You're going to love Arkham City. <laughs> uh, a lot of people say City. I think they usually say City's the best. So, yeah, I'm excited for that. FBL, thank you for the 100 bits. Thoughts on the TV series Children's Hospital? I've seen a little bit of it. What I saw was pretty funny. It really, really made me laugh. Um, 
Yeah, I haven't seen a ton. I probably should check out more. But yeah, what I saw is pretty great. Talking to Carl, thank you for the 100 bits. Heather and Doug, who had the worst performance of 2023? Man, I got to I feel like a lot of the stinkers of 2023 I didn't see. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of my thing, too. I usually try to just stay away from bad movies. Uh, I mean, I shouldn't say that. I mean, it's something where it's like, I want to see it, you know, sometimes because it's so bad. That I guess right. that is true. But um, yeah, if anyone's like, oh, I like, like how oh, you it's... said that with such confidence when you ha your job is reviewing bad movies. Yeah, I mean, like, but I like, almost never see bad movies. Like, like, like that's modern, not your job. Like modern bad <laughs> movies. Um, I'm sure there's like, I'm like going through here. I'm trying to think of ones that were just like, oh, like a, like like a. Oh wait, was uh, was Elvis this year? Did that come out this year? I don't know. Oh, listen, oh probably not because I'm not seeing it pop up. Uh, no, Priscilla did, but not Elvis. Okay. Um, that, okay. Let me just go to like, let me just think of all the stuff that Disney put out. Um. Yeah, the Haunted Mansion's boring, but I guess that I, I can't say they're bad performances. Um, mm, Little Mermaid remake was this year. Yeah, that's Melissa McCarthy was pretty bad in that. <laughs> like I said, I just thought she sounded drunk the whole time. I, I don't want to declare that's the worst I've seen, but it's the worst I can think of right now. Dev the Wiser, thank you for the hundred bits. Have you seen Armageddon 1998? And if so, what are your thoughts? Is there another Armageddon? Like, <laughs> 1998. That's like, have you seen Titanic in 1996? That's like, is there an, actually, there probably isn't our Titanic, but yeah, like most people know what you're talking about. Um, Yeah, I, I didn't hate it like a lot of people did when it came out, but I thought it was mostly boring. Um, I The first half I thought was okay, but when again, the, uh, the asteroid, I just thought it was so dull. It, it's not a very fun... It's not fun just looking at that giant rock. Even if it's in space, it's not that exciting. Uh, so yeah, I thought it got very boring after that. Alex the Animator, thank you for the 100 bits. Happy New Year, everyone. My question for Doug is, what are you doing for March this year? And did you see Emmett Otter's Jug Band Christmas yet? No, I have a friend who uh, has been telling me to see that too, though. Um, uh, I, I guess I should. It just doesn't sound like something good but i've heard a lot of people say it's very good um and uh i think I, so we haven't like 100 percent confirmed it yet but i'm leaning towards doing like an india jones uh month our big concern was uh how do we get around like with youtube you know there, there's swastikas all over the place it's a big youtube no-no and stuff you know can we get around it and stuff so um <sighs> Hopefully we can. I mean, it's like, it's, it's a part of history. It doesn't make any sense why they would be like, ah, oh, take it down. But like, you know, it will, will, it'll be fun to find other things to call them because we can't say Nazi either because that'll get it like flagged and stuff. So we'll have to make up like different names and that'll be kind of fun. <laughs> Joel B, thank you for the 100 bits. Was there a song in Wish that you liked? Um, You know, I didn't quite hate the songs as much as everyone else did. I, I can't say they were great. I mean, everyone, everyone's right that they're, they're passable. But with that said, they're still passable. Um, I, uh, I I actually did find myself humming in my head just every once in a while, just that, so I make this wish. I actually do find myself humming that a little bit. Um, you know, and, and that's something for, you know, songs everyone's like, oh, the worst. It's like, I, I hum them. You know, the, the lyrics aren't always that great, but uh, the, the melodies are okay. I apologize. It's Titanic 97. My apologies. Again, don't want people to get confused. Smash Ultra, thank you for the 100 bits. Cartoon villains like Fire Lord from Avatar committed a hundreds of genocides, but at the end, Aang spared his life while Disney, the most wholesome world of wonder, have villains who attempt murder and kill fewer, even killed once the Fire Lord, but they got killed even in brutal ways. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> and they both work. I, I think in uh, Avatar, Aang's pushed to the limit with, I mean, both physically and mentally with him. So it's even more impressive. He doesn't, you know, uh, uh, kill him off. Um, and then Disney, a lot of times they're very simple fairy tales or sometimes the villains end up, you know, axing themselves off and stuff like that. Uh, for, for the stories that they tell, I, I think they usually add up. It's very rare that I'm like, oh, that's, that's not good. You know, that wasn't appropriate. Like, no, they, they usually make sense. Pet Projects, thank you for the 100 bits. In your Great Mouse Detective reviews, you said that Fidget abducting Olivia's father in the intro traumatized you as a kid, but I'm curious if Radigan going psycho near the end scares you too, as it did me when I first watched it. 
I mean, yeah, but like in the right way, you kind of know when you're getting near the end of a film, you want your heart to start pumping and stuff like that, you know? So it's like, I think that's the thing. I was so used to that in movies. Like, well, then you're building up to the intense suspenseful moment just to open with that creepy bat coming in and stuff like that. And then just the little girl being all alone. I was just like, Ooh, that, that was a, that was a harsh moment for a little kid. <laughs> Bomb, thank you for the 100 bits. Who are some of the worst SNL cast members in your opinion? Like, which people felt totally out of place on the show? I, and I'm a minority here, I never got into Tracy Morgan. I try to laugh at his stuff, and it's, I, he's like the anti Keenan Thompson to me. Like, everything he says just feels wrong and not in a way that's like, oh, that, like, got a laugh out of me. That's really clever. Like, man, he found out how to make that funny. It, his always seem like the reverse. I'm just going to make this unfunny, <laughs> which I mean, I always kind of thought that about Norm Macdonald. And then years later, I, I saw the brilliance of what he was doing. So maybe the same thing will happen with Tracy Morgan. Um, yeah, I got no problem with him either. You know, I'm sure he's a great guy and everything. But yeah, I, I never got into his uh, style of comedy. Talking of Carl, thank you for the hundred bits. Do you guys have an actor, director, or whomever behind the scenes in film that you think has been done to death in Hollywood? For me, it's Lin Manuel Miranda. There are other new composers they can experiment with in films, but studios are using him as a crutch. Um, hmm, I'm sure there. I, I mean, the ones everybody kind of listed, like Seth Rogen, as it was done for a while, uh, a little too much. But um, I, I'm trying to think, like right now, what, what's done too much? Um. I don't know. Um, you know, I, I guess trends, you know, we talk about like the multiverse kind of being, you know, overdone. Um, I'll, I'll say this. Uh, somebody did an interesting video. I can't remember who it was, but talked about the death of mid-budget movies. I want just a mid-budget movie again. Uh, you know, that's one of the reasons Disney lost so much money is that they just threw so much uh, money at these films and uh, and Wonder Bros 2 and everything and it's just like it's it's okay you, you can just do like a middle of the road you know budget film and that way you kind of you have a budget you can make it look good but then you have to pull back on certain things too and you have to think more clever I think there's a nice like I'm not against like an end game or something like that but at the same time it's like I, I like the ones where you have to be not everything's handed to you in terms of uh, you know financial freedom it's like you gotta think a little clever and sometimes the film can be better for that Joel B, thank you for the 100 bits. Thoughts on an American werewolf in London? Would love to see an NC video on it. Uh, Yeah, I liked it. I, I didn't grow up with it. I only saw it maybe five years ago, something like that. And uh, I enjoyed it. It is another one of those where it wasn't what I expected, especially because I saw the sequel first. That's <laughs> American Werewolf in Paris, which, as you would expect, is a piece of shit. Uh, but it does have a good song. It's a good song from there. But, uh, yeah, the uh, I, I thought it was really cool, and the effects are crazy. Like, I can't... Again, that's almost like watching the thing. Like, you can't believe all these were really there and done without, like, any computers or anything. FBL, thank you for the 100 bits. Have you seen the 2015 John Travolta movie Criminal Activities? No, I don't even think I heard of that one uh i'll try to look into it movie mike thank you for the hundred bits what keith david villain do you like more the shadow man from the prince oh i think they pressed enter oh i'm sorry too early because yeah it's it ends there uh well uh, let me see I if i can find to part two yeah i don't know if there is a part two Ugh, all right sorry sorry um fbl thank you for the hundred bits favorite keenan thompson snl sketch Man, I'm trying to think. Uh, I, I think Black Jeopardy, the, the one I showed where uh, Tom Hanks as Doug uh, pops up and he's a, you know, he's a Trump supporter and everything. And most of the answers are exactly the same. I, that was so funny and so clever until they get to lives that matter. <laughs> he's like, I got some things to say about that. I'm sure you do. We're out of time. Bye bye. <laughs> that was so great. Ooh, Jeremiah, thank you for the 100 bits. What's y'all's favorite chicken restaurant? Oh, uh, probably Popeye's. Yeah, that sandwich Love is, Popeye's. is phenomenal. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. Wait, what can you say? It's the sandwich. Literally, everyone's doing chicken sandwiches because uh, that sandwich was so good. There is a Chicago chain that I have fallen absolutely in love with called Fry the Coop. Oh, I can yes. love oh, Fry the Coop. That, Fry the Coop oh sandwiches are art. And, 
and love it's fried the, coop. It's one of the few places, particularly with fast food, where when they say this is mild, this is medium, this is hot, they, they are it. correct. They they are. It's the first time they've actually gone to one of these. I'm like, that is the correct. Hot is hot. Yes. You know, flaming hot is flaming hot. And mild, I mean, like they 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 are not lying when they <laughs> put those uh, on there. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Dillbomb, thank you for the hundred bits. Are you a Goodfellas or Godfather type person? I know Godfather is better, but but I like Goodfellas. Um, it, it's just so I, I think especially at that point, I, I never saw a film quite do that half that speed and uh, that editing style. And now there's like a ton of films like that, but it's because of movies, you know, like Goodfellas. Um, but uh, Godfather is very clearly the better film. But uh, Goodfellas is my, I guess, kind of more my speed. I've seen a couple of, co couple of people commenting this, so I'm not calling out anyone in particular, but let me just be clear. We know that the Shadow Man fr is, the message was meant to be from the Princess and the Frog, but <laughs> yeah, the question yeah, that... was, what Keith David villain do you like more? And all we got was the Shadow Man from Princess and then nothing. So that's where the confusion was. Not that we yeah. don't know who Dr. Facilier the Shadow Man is. Yeah. We, we know that, but we don't know who the other choice was supposed to be in the question. Yeah. Um, Strider for Life, thank you for the 100 bits. So, Doug, have you thought of traveling to places like Thailand? Um, sure. Uh, <laughs> it's just, have you thought about going to Australia? Just like, uh, sure. Uh, just what a random place. Um, I don't know, most places, especially if there's like a convention out there, I mean, I, I usually don't say no to traveling for a convention. And, um, yeah, we usually like to do a, uh, uh, you know, when, when we do a vacation in January, we usually travel somewhere. We're not going to Thailand, but uh, we usually like to travel somewhere, you know, usually that we haven't been before. If every once in a while, we'll go back someplace we really like. Sean, thank you for the 100 bits. Thoughts on the Fleischer Brothers? Hoppity goes to town. I heard it's getting a Blu-ray release. Uh, let me look that up. Hold on. Hoppity goes to town. Let me see if I've seen this one. Um. Uh, Maybe I haven't seen this. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Is this the movie? Oh, this is the movie. Okay. You know, I've never actually sat down and watched the whole thing. That's another one where it's like, yeah, because I, I do like uh, uh, Fleischer, and I'm like, I really should check this out. It looks like it'd be pretty cool. Uh, so I have that saved so I don't forget. Talking of Carl, thank you for the 100 bits. Do you guys know there's a Wes Anderson Pokemon trailer that came out last year? Look it up. It's kind of cool. I'm assuming it's a fan-made thing, because that was a trend yeah. for a little while to, like, make it look like Wes Anderson directed this movie. Did I see... I th I know I saw the Star Wars one. I think I saw the Pokemon one, and I, I got about half of it, because, again, I don't watch Pokemon, but uh, the, the half I got was pretty funny. Dillbomb, thank you for the 100 bits. Thoughts on L.A. Confidential? That's an Arwah that was... I have to see it again, because I think I was... I mean, I was a teen, but... Uh, Maybe I was doing homework or something because it was hard for me to follow it. Like, like it, how do I put it? It looked like it was confidently done. You know what I mean? Like, oh, this looks like it, everyone knows what they're talking about and stuff like that. I just didn't. Uh, so I remember for the little that I followed, I was interested, but I think I had to see it again because as a teen, uh, like I said, working on math and stuff like that, watching it at the same time, it was hard for me to follow. <laughs> That's Disney Nerd. Thank you for the 100 bits. After seeing Kubo and the Two Strings, here's how I rank the four Leica movies I've seen. Four, Co Corpse Bride. Three, Paranorman. Two, Coraline. One, Kubo and the Two Strings. Is Corpse Bride Leica? I forgot about that. I, oh, yeah. I, okay. It, it's Warner Brothers and Leica. Okay. Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Uh, that's so funny. I didn't know it was Leica. I guess that makes sense. Oh, well, very cool. Joel B, thank you for the 100 bits. Top three Hitchcock films. For me, it's Psycho, Rear Window, and North by Northwest. It's pretty good. Um, Psycho, uh, hmm. oh, uh, Vertigo is phenomenal. Um, I really like one. It doesn't get talked about a lot, and I like it. The, the technical stuff is great, but I love the acting from Stewart in it. Uh, Rope is really, really good. Stewart is just phenomenal in that movie. Uh yeah, I, I mean, A Stranger's Out Train is also like a close third or whatever. Smash Ultra, thank you for the 100 bits. Even Ratchet and Clank have funniest villains like Chairman uh, Drex Gleekman Vox, who is a Fox new parody, by the way. Stuart, Zergo, Emperor, Tychion, and of course, the greatest villain of all time, Vendra Prague. Oh, and Dr. Nefarious, I guess. Uh, good to know. 
Mike, uh, movie Mike, thank you for the hundred bits. Oh, and here is the rest of the question. Hey, all right, yeah, hey. Keith David villain, which you like more, Shadow Man or King Andreas from Amphibia? Um, oh, the Shadow Man. Uh, you know, it, it, it Andre, Andreas, is that how you say it? Hold on, Andra, I think it's right. Anyway, I don't know. I, I, I think you say it right. Um, but uh, I. So that character is more complex, but the Shadow Man's just cooler. He can do cooler stuff. He looks more cool. He, he's got a song. Uh, yeah, like, uh, that that's more my speed. But, but the other character's done very well. Talking of Carl, thank you for the 100 bits. Have you guys seen the interview of the female director of the upcoming new Star Wars film? I don't care if a movie is directed by a woman and there are tons of female characters like Rey I really like, but if you go out on stage and say you want to make men uncomfortable, you're purposely alienating half your audience. Star Wars is supposed to be for everyone. Did she really say that? Because if, if she said that, that that doesn't sound like like put it this way. Disney will be having a talk with her. Right? Because that. not a bright thing to the say. The interview I saw, she said that it's about time that a woman takes the reins of Star Wars, and I was like, all right. Oh, Chad is saying she did say that. Ooh, ooh, that's that ain't gonna go over. <laughs> <laughs> also, what happened to the fucking uh, what's her name? It directed uh. Wonder Woman, she was going to direct know, this X-Wing. that cool she X just, one. She just fucking put her balls on the line, man. She just put her ovaries and just like, boom, I'm going to make the greatest Star Wars. My father died as a pilot. I'm going to make a movie about a pilot. It's going to be about Star Wars. And she fucking watched this X-Wing. It's like, holy shit, just lines drawing cards on the table. Let's go. It's like, oh, they're not making it. What the fuck right. are you talking that about? That I want to see. I just like, even if it's like, I want to see or awful or what I want to know what the fuck that movie was going to be. Yeah. Same. <laughs> I never like got so excited just, just seeing nothing, just the director come out, say some stuff and then walk towards a special effect. But I was so crazy excited about what the hell that was going to be. I hate that. We're not going to see that. <laughs> Ooh, Jeremiah. Thank you for the hundred bits. Disney December for honey. We shrunk ourselves. Uh, I've got a request for it before. I'll see if I can change. Is it even on DVD? It's probably just a VHS, uh, would be my guess, but, uh, I'll try to look it up. Modica, thank you for the hundred bits. Hi guys, Doug, since you're going on vacation, I take it that there is no new NC two weeks from now and have a nice holiday. Uh, yes, yes, two weeks, uh, from now, correct. And oh, thank you so much. <laughs> FBL, thank you for the 100 bits. Did you see the Golden Globes? Everyone was saying how bad Joe Coy's opening monologue was awful, but I watched it and thought it was fine. Um, I heard it was bad. I don't watch the Golden Globes to begin with. Um, I, I'm having a hard time just watching the Oscars now. Um, a, 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 la 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 la. Uh, it's a singing show now. Uh, <laughs> a lot of award shows I, I don't really get that into. I, I did when I was younger and even like kind of early adulthood, but now, it, I don't know, they're just... They're so stale and they're maybe because we have so much content. Now, a lot of things have changed, I think, because of the Internet and phones and YouTube. And just there's so much content everywhere. And I think it's another reason why some movies are still films. Everyone thought would at least break even are not doing that great because we just have constant content. I think it's the same thing with award shows. They're just not that interesting because we have so much content everywhere else that it's like, well, here's this one movies. It's like. Well, yeah, okay, but, you know, have you been on YouTube? Have you been on TikTok? You've been watching? I, I mean, like, what, where's the award show for that? Like, I'll watch those, you know, kind of thing. And then I'm probably lying, because I probably won't, because I'm not into award shows. So, yeah, I'm just not that into uh, Quickly, no, I did not. <laughs> Demon Ayers, thank you for the 100 bits. Hey, Doug, do you think you'll do a Disney Sember on Once Upon a Time? It's too many shows. I've heard Rob's describe some of it, and it does sound like fun. And I do believe everyone when they say it gets really, really bad, but not a fun kind of bad, you know, just a lame kind of bad. But um, the stuff he described does sound really great. It's just finding time to watch, and I don't think I'm going to have time to watch it. Joel B., thank you for the 100 bits. Simpsons or Bob's Burgers? Right now, Bob's Burgers. But if you were to ask me what, like, shaped, like, I don't know, like 40% of my sense of humor, I mean, that's The Simpsons. I mean, that's always going to be, you know, a part of me. Talkative Carl, thank you for the 100 bits. By the way, if this new Star Wars movie tanks, I bet you the PR move would be to blame the audience for not showing up, even though it would be 
their fault. All we want is just a good story that everyone can relate to on a level. Bryce Dallas Howard should be the one to make a Star Wars movie. I mean, I was going to say, let's wait until the movie's actually made. I mean, you saw yeah. the fucking X-Wing. Like, even when they announce it, it doesn't get made. So um, I'll, I'll wait and say, I'll say this. There's definitely been directors that have either said things or done things I disagree with, but have made good movies. And there's directors I absolutely love that have made absolute shit. And vice versa, there's ones that say good things and make good things and stuff like that. Uh, for me, even though I don't think it's the best thing to say, I don't think that necessarily means the movie's going to be bad. I hope it doesn't mean that because I want to see good Star Wars. Um, but uh, yeah, but we'll see how it goes. Smash Ultra, thank you for the 100 bits. I feel like future villains should be for sat sa satirical, sorry, satirical purposes because turning villains cause of bad childhood pain, etc. feels cliche. What do you think? Uh, I'm sorry, could you read that again? <laughs> I think they're basically asking, they think that turning villains bad because they had like a bad childhood or some pain feels like a cliche. Gotcha. What do you think of that? Um, you know, it's funny because years ago, it used to be the flip, just having a villain be evil just to be evil. That was the cliche. And now going more deep into their backstory and giving them a reason for being evil, that's becoming cliche. And I... I think that's good. I, I think it's good to have the variety. I think it's good to have a villain that's just a straight up baddie, but then one that was, you know, created and, uh, you know, sympathetic. So um, I'm fine with either. I don't know. It, it, it's like saying, do, do you like a blonde or a redhead to be in the role? It's like, I, I, I don't care. As long as they do it good. <laughs> as long as they perform good, they do the acting good. I don't care. It's the same thing. Just like, it's good to have variety. Noah's Inner, thank you for the 100 bits. Doug, they moved up the date for Godzilla X Kong. It's now coming March 29th. Maybe that would be mm. a good time to do Monster Month, reviewing the films in the MonsterVerse. Just an idea. May, you know, I was thinking of this with, like, the Planet of the Apes movies, too, because I'm like, well, the kingdom is coming out, so maybe I should review all the Planet of the Apes movies then, you know, just in one video. And I'm like, but I'll be leaving out that one, you know, the one that's coming out. So that does kind of drive me a little crazy. And I don't know, because we had to do them ahead of time too. I don't know how to work with that yet. Um, I'm liking doing Indiana Jones because I want to talk about that newer one that came out, but uh, uh, we'll see. It's not a bad idea, but um, it, I'm liking Indiana Jones. Alex, the animator, thank you for the 100 bits. Doug, what are your thoughts on the TMNT special Operation Blue Line video special and thought of doing an NC review of it? Uh, uh, I mean, that's probably like the lowest budget <laughs> thing they've ever done. The only reason I haven't even found out about it, I thought I saw everything Ninja Turtles growing up, but uh, James found that one. I was just like, where the hell did you find this? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's literally just like a Ninja Turtle costume. You see at a Toys R Us, the mouths don't move or anything like that. Um, so yeah, even by those low standards, I'm just like, this feels cruel to kick this while it's down. <laughs> Demon Ayers, thank you for the 100 bits. Hey, Doug, a video game that you should play on Twitch stream is Stray. Oh, that's the cat one. Yeah, right? I think you, you said you played that one already, right? No. Uh, oh, you I haven't? haven't You've never one. played no. Stray? No, oh, I, I've Doug. seen a ton of footage of it, but... Uh, it's very good. Uh, yeah, it can... Um, if we can find out a way to use AI to make it look like Chaplin, I'll be a lot more interested. Oh, I, uh, but, uh, I can <laughs> find a way to give you a Chaplin... Uh, PNG tuber? <laughs> uh, uh, oh, is there actually like, can you customize the cat? Is that actually a thing? No, no, no. I, I'm saying that instead of your camera, I will give you a model oh. of Chaplin. <laughs> oh, like just Chaplin's head on me the whole time? Yes. Talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that entry be <laughs> just like, this is such an interesting documentary of the future. <laughs> yeah. Talking of Carl, thank you for the 100 bits. Given what we know so far, is it possible Dooku separatist ideals would have been right? From what we see in Tales of the Jedi, Doc Brown and Mandalorian, the sequel trilogy, and Balin's Skull and Ahsoka, the Empire and Republic are faulty and will eat themselves. Uh, you know, it's... Even though I liked Clone Wars a lot, of, like Mandalorian and stuff like that, I feel like with Clone Wars, that was the closest I came to following just what the hell this war was about. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and it's still confusing to me. I will say this. they Clone Wars, at the very least, did a good job showing the faults of both sides. I, I really like that it showed the faults of the Jedi, that, you know, the extremes are not necessarily good. Um, and, and I like the main character, one of the main characters, you know, like... 
actually disappears from the show because of it for like several seasons. Uh, and I thought that was so interesting. So I think the flip of that making, uh, well, I like that one where was it? Padme meets up with a politician who is like a separatist, you know, and they find common ground. They still find a way to work together and stuff like that. But I mean, they were on total opposite sides, uh, you know, so I think it is good. They're showing, yeah, yeah, let's not, for something that was clearly meant to start out as pretty black and white, Darth Vader wearing black. His name is like Darth Vader. It's like the most evil name. And Luke Skywalker, he wears white. What inspired the farm boy? He's got to save the day. I like they find more gray as they uh, go along. And, and and that's not betraying it either, because again, when you find out Vader's relationship to him and everything, it, it they already started that in the second film. So I think it checks out. Noah Zinner, thank you for the 100 bits. Doug, the ghost, and Molly McGee ends this weekend, I think, would be a great time to start watching it for a Disney summer review. And like I mentioned, the number of times you see the characters hug each other would make for a fun drinking game. Uh, I did put it down on the list. I'm going to try and see that uh, this year, especially with it wrapping up. I like to watch a show like just as it wraps up. So when I get it out, I can be somewhat on the same you know level as the people who uh watched it you know uh i was gonna say grew up watching it but that's not the case you know they finished it up, like finish it up with them joel b thank you for the hundred bits thoughts on dead poet society i'm not gonna lie i was kind of snickering at the ending am i a cruel person I think it sucks. <laughs> I, I'm the asshole, man. I, me and Roger Ebert, we're the only ones. Uh, no, I um, beautifully shot. Uh, not badly directed in terms of, like, you know, atmosphere and, and performances and stuff like that, but um, it's a bad script, and I... I'm going to turn this stream right around, Doug. No. I, I, it, it, is, it is not good. And I don't know, for all the talk that people have, I mean, I guess I don't want to give away the ending, but I mean, for all the talk that people have about, like, you know, suicide and suicide prevention and stuff like that, I mean, is that, I, I don't know. I, I hate using the word problematic. It's a way to overuse, but it's like, even when I was a kid watching that, I'm like, this, this feels forced. This feels phony. This doesn't feel, this feels exploitive. And it, it never sat well with me, but, you know, but the inspiring ending where they, you know, they don't conform, but they all stand on their desk, which is kind of conforming. Like they're brave enough to, you know, stand the desk, but not saying no to a pen. And everything. I mean, it's a, oh, I didn't like it. I really didn't like it. So no, you're, you're not alone. Demon ears. Thank you for the hundred bits. Hey Doug, do you think you'll do an NC review on Disney's home on the range? Uh, I don't know. It didn't, um, I don't have much to say about it. I, uh, I did Disney December on it. That was enough. Um, it, it's pretty bad, but, uh, I don't know. American Amber Tilly being okay. <laughs> I mean, she's always good. Anything she's in, she's always good. But, uh, yeah. Um, I don't think, I don't have a passion to talk about it. I think, um, I think I did the Disney December. That, that was good. That's Disney nerd. Thank you for the hundred bits. Here's a Toy Story joke. <clears throat> Buzz. Hey, Woody. Woody. What, Buzz? Have you heard that Andy's mom got herself some new toys? No. Can't wait to meet them. Buzz. I heard that they have the same names as us. <laughs> there it is. I like that. Uh, uh, you know, I was thinking to myself, okay, they, Mad TV did this routine before. Oh, they're just going to be, it's going to be a version of that. But I'm like, all right, that's actually pretty clever. Because then you start going, it's like, well, well, what's the dinosaur one like? What's, <laughs> what's Mr. Potato Head like? <laughs> and Mrs. Potato Head. <laughs> Matt Phantom the first, thank you for that 10 month subscription. Welcome back. It's time for me, 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 me. Thank you, Doug. Thank you. Noah Zinner, thank you for the 100 bits. Doug, are you caught up on Loki season two? And if so, what are your thoughts? Plus, the creator said the story is fully complete, so you can review for Disney Summer now. Yeah, that's another one I have on the list for uh, this year because I did see season one. Season two, I imagine, wouldn't take that long uh, to get through. I hear it's great. Um, but one of the few things that came out this year that uh, that apparently everyone's like, you know, okay, you know, Disney's had a rough year, but Loki too. Oh, that was good. That was really, really good. So I'm excited to check it out. FBL, thank you for the hundred bits. Thoughts on the Colonel Angus Christopher Walken SNL sketch? <laughs> Fucking hilarious. <laughs> and you know what it's gonna be as soon as it starts. But I'm like, oh, I'm I'm here for it. As long as Walken is there, just talking as fucking bizarre as possible and making this dumb joke over and over. Uh, yeah, I loved it. Gary Turbo, thank you for the hundred bits. I would like to start by wishing Matt Pat a happy retirement. I'm not a fan of him, but understand his decision and to honor the guy who played Sunspot on X Men: Days of Future Past. Um, what? No, 
Was he in Days of Future Pet? No, was he? Or is that just, it's just a movie theory, a film theory thing? I don't know. S Sunspot. Okay. Is it like uh, Mice Critical being in The Hunger Games? <laughs> like, was he actually in a movie? I just never knew this. I don't um, know. I feel bad because I haven't seen a ton of his. Uh, Rob's seen a lot more uh, of his. But I've seen a little bit, and I liked it. Uh, he showed me, like, maybe a handful of videos, and uh, I enjoyed them. Um, yeah, it's definitely like the year of YouTubers retiring. I guess. The month of YouTubers uh, retiring, man. So, um, not me. I'm in my prom. <laughs> Uh, Alex, the animator. Oh, they're two separate things. Thank you. Oh, they are. Okay. Specifying. So it's okay. It was two separate things. Matt Pat. And then also to honor the guy who played Sunspot just passed away. That actor. Gotcha. It, gotcha. Okay. I didn't understand the context either. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I, I forgot who Sunspot was, too, so I'm really doing yeah. bad today. I, I am just, I'm doing terrible at this Q&A today. I apologize. I haven't you seen not, Who Doug? is that? What is that? I am sorry. I'm not You're even doing retiring. I, I'm just doing terrible. Oh, Captain, my Captain. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Stay on that desk. <laughs> Alex, the animator, thank you for the 100 bits. For next Disney December, can you talk about this movie, Splash? While You Were Sleeping, Escape to Witch Mountain, Annie 1999, and some Pixar shorts. Uh... 99 no no there's a more the jimmy fox one is like 2000 something right okay this must be a tv one um i don't know if anyone would check those out i don't have a huge passion to talk about i did see while you were sleeping though i thought that was very funny uh that's one of those few uh 90s rom-coms where i was like you know that that was okay and that was actually legit really funny sometimes i use a clip from i love the clip of bill pullman just going <laughs> i love that clip <laughs> FBL, thank you for the 100 bits. Thoughts on the Jason Bateman movie, Bad Words? Did I see? I don't think. Again, man, I'm just so terrible today. Uh, I think at this point, people have asked you about all the movies that you already know, and now we're getting into some obscure ones, you know? Yeah, let me, let me see if I... I don't think I did. I'm trying to think if I started this one. It was one of those where I'm like, oh, it's just so bad I had to turn it off, or I just never saw it. Um... I don't think I ever saw it. Um, it looks like a movie my wife might like, though. So, uh, yeah, maybe we'll check it out. Joel B., thank you for the 100 bits. <clears throat> Thoughts on the Charlton Heston movie, The Omega Man? I saw it years ago. Well, that's the original uh, I Am Legend, isn't it? Um, I remember liking it, but again, I haven't seen it since I was like, I don't know, 12, something like that. So, uh, yeah, it's been a hot minute. Wiccan, thank you for the 100 bits. Hey, guys, hope you're having a great day. Who are your favorite Star Wars characters? Mole for me forever and always. Also, Emperor's New Groove is S tier. <laughs> um, man. I mean, if it was like by the original trilogy, I could say, oh, yeah, the Emperor or something like that. But because it's expanded so much, so it's, all much. The it's all the villains. It's like Ventress, Trilla, I thought was fucking phenomenal. Trilla's such a good character. But yeah, um... Uh, you know, I, I do like the Emperor a lot. You know, Maul, if it was just the uh, prequels, I'd be like, no, there's nothing to him. But in the Clone Wars, he's like really fucking cool. Um, you know, now that we've seen more, it's so funny because I'm sure some people would disagree, but uh, Ahsoka, now that we've seen more and more like, it just her, I mean, literally grow up in front of our eyes. I mean, this Hell fictional yeah. character grow up and what she's become and everything. I'm like, I, it, that really is like one of the, great star wars characters in mm -hmm. my opinion because i like as an adult she is very very different from a kid but it's still her you can tell it's her yeah and i really really like that and she goes through kind of the same growth a lot of these jedis that we follow go through with like obi-wan and so forth so uh yeah no there's a fair amount for you Spooky Elephant, thank you for the 100 bits. Biggest example of something that had a great concept but terrible execution there's a lot of those. Um, I just think Christmas with the Cranks is a very clever idea. Uh, honestly, I think the idea of like this whole town celebrates Christmas, puts up the decorations, and this one house is just like, we're done. We're just, we're, we're Christmas out. And then the town turns against them. Like, that's really funny. But no, it's the people not putting up the decorations. They're the bad guys. Like, what? You got that completely backwards. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's one of them. I'm sure there's a lot of other ones too, but that's the ones popping in my head. 
Noah Zinner, thank you for the 100 bits. Doug, at some point, could you please check out Christopher Nolan's Tenet? It's a very polarizing film, and I'm super curious about what you would think. For me, it's a crazy, imaginative, visual, visually fun. I should, but I don't want to. It just <laughs> sounds like Nolan at his nolan ish you know what I mean? Like, yes. when, when his stuff works like Oppenheimer and Dark Knight and stuff, it's like, oh, chef's kiss, amazing and stuff. When it doesn't work, it is so <laughs> obnoxious, in my opinion. I just hate the constant monologuing and people just talking about just saying dialogue to get you to the next scene and over explaining why this is important. Like they're the critics analyzing the movie. And I, I can't stand that. Um, a lot of people said that's what Tenet is, but uh, at the same time, there is usually a very cool visual style to it. The idea looked kind of cool. Um, one of these days I might check it out, but uh, I'm in, I'm in no hurry. <laughs> Talkative Carl, thank you for the 100 bits. Doug, will you review the Shane Black's Kiss Kiss Bang Bang this Christmas year? Matter of fact, you should add more of his films to your Christmas reviews, considering all of his films are set during Christmas. Oh, I didn't know that. Huh. Um, I think I've only seen a handful of his movies, like only one or two. Um... I don't think I've seen Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. I hear it's pretty good. So that's, uh, again, it's just the theme of tonight. It's me not seeing stuff. Again, I apologize. Uh, so I'm a terrible movie critic. Um, yeah, I will uh, try to check that out after I see every other movie ever made that I have never seen. Alex the Animator, thank you for the 100 bits. Doug, have you seen Woody Allen's The Purple Rose of Cairo? And what were your thoughts on that? God damn it. This is intentional now. Who's seen these movies? <laughs> I mean, it's like, I know people have seen them, but I mean... Purple Rose? I didn't know he made that. Who knows that Woody Allen made a movie called Purple Rose? Nobody knows that. Get better question. No, I have not seen it. Um, I will do my best. Again, after seeing the uh, 80 other movies and shows that have been recommended on the stream. Noah Zinner, thank you for the 100 bits. Doug, the first NC review I ever saw was The Cat in the Hat, so that video holds a special place in my heart. My one problem, that scene with the cat on the dress on the swing with the unicorn is cut out. Please find a way to fix that. No, I that's on me because, um, well, I mean, so it was cut because of copyright, but then I was saying like, oh, can I just edit it, you know, back in? Can we just have another version of it? My boss said, yeah, and I, I just haven't gotten around to it. That and The Grinch, I think the ending it was cut out of that, too. Um, so, it, yeah, I'll, I'll re-edit them. Um, I think I wrote that down, then I took it off, because I'm like, I want to relax, but it's like, I, I've waited on that too long. I should get around to that. Noah Zinner, thank you for the 100 bits. Doug, can we get a clue to next week's NC review, please? Um, <clears throat> it, uh, it is a film from the Disney Renaissance. And that's all I'm going to say because I gave a lot of clues yesterday <laughs> when we were ranking them or uh, S tiering them. Or, you know what I mean, tiering yes, them, whatever. Tiering it is. them, tier list, yes. Spooky Elephant, thank you for the 100 bits. Favorite moments from the Spider Man game. And how would you rank all three? <laughs> you know, it's funny. I'm like, did three come out? I'm like, no, Miles. Miles. Yeah, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, I think just a lot of the. Uh, the way they make the game kind of like a horror game when uh, Peter has the suit was pretty great. Because I just, it's always what I wanted to see. I wanted to see the symbiote scary. I wanted to see it psychological. I wanted to see it, you know, legit, like, kind of creepy to watch. I never got that in any of the movies. So that was very satisfying uh, to see. Uh, Joel B, thank you for the 100 bits. What's a future setting in a movie that you would like to live in? I would love to live in the future from one of my favorite movies, Her. Um, I mean, you kind of are. I mean, God, the way AI is going. <laughs> um, let me see. A future I like to live. I'm trying to think of like... I, I like very, you know, gothic places, you know, so I'm trying to think of like a future that's very gothic. Ironically, Gotham City, like in Batman Beyond, is not that gothic. Um, <laughs> let me type in like future worlds in movies. Yeah, I don't know. For some reason, I'm blanking on this. Um, no, it's just a movie called Future World, because of course there isn't. That's all that's popping up here. Uh, I don't know, Star Wars. <laughs> I'm sure there's other ones, but uh, let me try Future Cities. Uh, you can go to the next question while I look this up. The Boom Bash, thank you for that seven. Oh, oh my God, first one that came up. That's it, Fifth Element. Would love to live Ooh. in that world. That, that would be awesome. 
That's a good choice. Um, Boom Bash, thank you for the seven month subscription. Welcome back. Hey, Doug and Heather, random movie that I watched as a kid was City of Ember. As an adult, I see that the movie was okay, but not super memorable, but I feel glad that it just existed. My question is, do you have a similar movie, which not many people remember, but are glad that you saw it and that it existed? Yeah, City of Ember. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, uh, I like that movie. I was shocked it didn't get good critical reviews when it came out and everything. I thought it was interesting. The only thing, and I guess I can give this away because uh, because it's not what happens in the movie. I thought the twist was going to be that they shrunk down and they were in like a, a, a you know a potted plant or something like that, or just in the ground or something because there's these giant moles going around and they're like, oh yeah, the, the surface world, it's all destroying everything, but is it, do we know when they're climbing up, they're climbing up? I really thought the big reveal was gonna be that they were shrunk down and that wasn't the reveal. <laughs> I thought that was kind of a missed opportunity, but uh, I don't know. I thought, I love the way the world looked. I love, I, I thought Bill Murray was pretty funny. I thought the main characters were uh, interesting enough. Uh, it's not like spectacular, but yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I, I think it's a decent movie. Alexander, thank you for the hundred bits. Did you ever get a chance to see A Haunting in Venice? And if so, what do you think? Nah, I, I never even saw the uh, the second one. Um, I guess everybody really hated the second one, but uh, Haunting in Venice is supposed to be uh, really good, so I will uh, do my best. Gary Turbo, thank you for the 100 bits. How did you feel when you hit it big with Nostalgia Critic? The reason for the question is that I was checking out how Diablo Cody started out and ended up an Academy Award-nominated screenwriter. Um, well, once I win my Oscar, I'll let you know. No, um... There are words. It's a fucking dream come true. Uh, you know, I just saw an interview with uh, Rob Paulson. They said, you ever thinking about retiring? I'm going to retire someday, by the way. <laughs> yeah, no, but, no, but not soon. But uh, he said he didn't want to because he said, uh, he said, I, I can make a room, I can make this room laugh right now with one word, one syllable. Narf! And everyone started laughing. And he's like, it's not even a proper word. And... That just brings immediate joy to people. That's what this job does. Why would I give up on that? And it's like, it's a pretty fucking great attitude. And as much as I can make jokes about like, ah, that credit card, ah, reacting and stuff like that, it does bring a lot of people joy. And that's like really, really cool. And I like that I'm not, I like that I'm not so small. Nobody, you know, that I, I can make a living at it, you know, and, and enough people know who I am, but I'm not so big that it's like too stressful either that everyone wants control over it and wants to give their input and put their thumbprints on and stuff. So it's a nice, it's a nice in between to be. And uh, yeah, I, it, it's a dream job, man. I, every time I say, man, thank you all so much. I really mean it. Cause it's uh, yeah, no, it, it, it's phenomenal. I really do have y'all to thank. FBL, thank you for the 100 bits. Thoughts on the Narnia movies? I like them. The third one's probably the weakest, but um, I like them okay. I'll say, I've only read the first book, so I didn't have the books to compare them to. I guess if you read, like, the second Narnia book, you really don't like the second one that much, but um, I thought it was all right. I don't know. Get my interest. Demon Ayers, thank you for the 100 bits. Hey, Doug, <clears throat> what do you think of The Boy and the Heron? Do you think it deserved to win the Golden Globe for Best Animated Picture, or do you think Across the Spider-Verse got robbed? It should go to Across the Spider-Verse. And I really do like Boy and the Heron. Um, but uh, as I always say, it's almost a four-star movie. They just kind of explain a little too much at the end. Saltburn does the same thing. If anybody's seen the movie, it's so good at creating its own world. And you're kind of scratching your head like, what is it doing? This is so fascinating. It just creates its own like strange logic and environment and everything. And then at the very end, they're just like, Oh, by the way, this was all, they, they explained too much. It's like, no, shut up, shut up. I want to, I, I want to leave this open. I want to have like interpretations of it. It's, uh, it's always such a shame when that happens, but neither ruined the films. And uh, we're across the Spider-Verse. I thought just like, I mean, I, I've never seen a movie like that uh, where I feel like I've seen movies like Boy and the Heron before. And they're very good, but it's like, I, I've seen that before. Across the Spider-Verse, that, that was something really new. Jay Pitt, thank you for the 100 bits. Doug, speaking of Kenan Thompson, did you get a chance to see Good Burger 2? As someone who grew up for the first, uh, with the first one, I personally had a lot of fun with it. Most people say it's good. I, I was saying almost by design, it can't be bad. If it decides to be a drama, maybe that's the only way it could be bad. Uh, because if the writing's good, great. If the writing's bad, that's kind of what was already, except now they're a lot older. And it's just fun to see them do this stuff, you know, being a lot older. So uh, 
I believe everyone when they say it's good. I should check it out. I don't have Paramount Plus. That's uh, the big thing. But um, uh, I'm curious to check it out because, uh, yeah, it, it is one of those where it's like, I can't see it being bad, weirdly. <laughs> Gary Turbo, thank you for the 100 bits. What's your favorite likable jackass? Mine is Reinhardt. He's a complete ass, but truly charming towards women. I really like um, uh, Bernard in uh, Black Books. It's pretty great. Um, and Black Adder from Black Adder, uh, also great. I, a lot of them are British, the more I think about it. You know, Faulty from Faulty Towers and stuff like that. Like, those are the people. Like, they're such a-holes, but they're, they're so funny. And in their own way... They're both kind of cool, but also really pathetic at the same time. Um, yeah, th th those are the ones I like. Talkative of Carl, thank you for the 100 bits. Disney Star Wars are bouncing ideas for an Anakin Skywalker series star starring Hayden Christensen. The scenes we've gotten in Kenobi and Ahsoka series are incredible with him. What plot do you have in mind that stars Anakin as the main lead? You know, how about... How about in between him being a little boy and, and a teen? Because... We get so much of him as, a, you know, to me, that's kind of like what happens in the Bible when it goes from, you know, little boy Jesus to just grown man. It's like so that, like, yeah. that that middle must be pretty interesting. Uh, so I don't know why they don't go to I mean, I do know why they want Hayden Christensen in it. Look, we got the guy and he's good now. So I'm sure that's a big part of it. But uh, I don't know if they're going to do it. I, I'd like to see him develop, you know, sort of those, uh, you know, in between years. I think that'd be more interesting. J. Pitt, thank you for the 100 bits. Gremlins 1 or 2? When I was a kid, I said 2, and now I say 1, which is my Rob's the flip. When he was a kid, he said 1, and now he says 2, because he loves how insane 2 is. Um, I respect the oddness of the first one more that it's kind of trying to take itself seriously, and that almost makes it funnier, where 2 is just a pure slapstick insane, we're, we're trying to be zany, which is great. I still like it, but... Uh, yeah, I have more respect for the ones that are trying to be a bit more genuine. They're being a little bit more experimental with like the drama and the comedy where the second one's just, it's a Looney Tunes cartoon. Joel B, thank you for the 100 bits. Thoughts on the Hitchcock film, Rope? Well, okay, one I've seen, one I even said I saw. Uh, I love it. That's one of my favorite ones. I only saw it maybe uh, maybe six years ago or something like that. And uh, a lot of it's just for uh, Stewart's performance. Like, I you can just watch him throughout that whole film and just know what he's thinking. There are scenes where he's just in the background listening to what somebody's saying, and it's just, it, he's so fucking good. I don't know, p people think of him as like, you know, from It's a Wonderful Life and, and Vertigo, he's the everyman, you know, and, and he is, he does all that great, but man, he, if you want to see his range, watch that movie. He's just so fucking fascinating in that. <laughs> Honest reviewer, thank you for the 20 month subscription. Welcome thank back. You. Appreciate it. Sup, Doug and Heather. Great you doing, Fat Albert. Honestly, I don't remember most of this movie aside from the existential aspect, existentialism aspect. I think it's a cool route to take a live action adaptation of an old cartoon. It just needs a better director to tackle it. Yeah, there's there's weirdly something there. When, when they kind of kept going, it was talking about like the connection to the grandfather and stuff like that. I'm like, I there's something here surprisingly i just assumed there would be nothing there at all um yeah you're right it just needed to be tweaked and worked out uh better but um yeah and this comes from someone that doesn't think it's a good film but i'm like but i see something there there can be something can be done with this Fallishy, thank you for the 100 bits. Doug, I know you're a busy guy, but I'm wondering if you're watching any shows for yourself these days as in not for a review just curious uh Rob's been trying to get me to watch the show Bodies, uh, so I'm watching that uh, at night now. I finally finished episode one out of, like, I don't know, ten, I think, <laughs> something like that, so I'm, I'm behind on everything. Uh, like I said, my wife's getting into Billions again, which is fun to watch. Again, I love that show. Um, I'm trying to think there's any other... Uh... I got a list of things that I'm like, I want to watch just for me, but I haven't got a chance to see that many... <laughs> Joel B, thank you for the 100 bits. Favorite scene from Willy Wonka on the Chocolate Factory? Hmm. I actually really like the final line a lot. Uh, it's just a very basic, you know what? No lesson, no deep thing. Just be happy. You, you, you know what happened to the guy? He always wanted this and he got it. He was happy. I'm like, that's nice. That's, yeah, every yeah. once in a while, it's nice to hear that. Again, that's like a Christmas story. He gets his thing and he's happy. Boom. That's okay. <laughs> Joel B, thank you for the 100 bits. Have you seen any of the Kissing Booth movies on Netflix? They're so bad. A Kissing Booth? Yep, Kissing Booth. 
I think I've seen like the trailer. I think I've heard people say they're really bad, but uh, yeah, it doesn't look like my thing. J Bit, thank you for the hundred bits. Favorite Kurosawa film? Um, going through them in my head. Uh, I don't know why this one speaks to me because it's clearly not his best, but I, I really like it. It's a movie called Dreams, and it's just a collection mm -hmm. of shorts. Um, but the shorts are very, some are a little too straightforward. I mean, some are just two people talking. It's explaining too much and stuff, but others are just like so raw and aggressive. Um, and some have like, you know, they all have like some sort of supernatural thing usually going on, but it, they feel kind of like folk tales, but then other times it'll be like, you know, something will be very abstract and then something will be very spelled out. And then suddenly Martin Scorsese will be Vincent van Gogh. Like what the fuck, <laughs> you know, like it, you just didn't know what was going to come around the corner. And, uh, I don't know. It, it felt very dreamlike in a weird way, like somewhere in between, like just conscious thought, you're just thinking out stuff in your head. And then you're almost kind of like half awake, half asleep too. Uh, yeah, I'm not saying that's his best, but it, it, that's probably my favorite. FBL. Thank you for the hundred bits. Favorite episode of Seinfeld. Hmm. Probably the contest. I think that's the first time I ever saw anything, a show, movie, anything, talk about that. And uh, I just, it was one of those things where I was like, I, this is such a cliche to say, but I was like, can they talk about that? Can they? <laughs> like, I just never said, now it's talked about everywhere. But yeah, back then it was just like, wow, a sitcom is talking about this? And they're talking about it without talking about it, you know, at the yeah. same time. Uh, yeah, no, I thought that was uh, very, very funny. Gary Turbo, thank you for the 100 bits. With the Winnie the Pooh movie and the Steamboat Willie movie out, the trend of attacking Disney for making lazy cash, grab, cash grabs then enjoying the same cash grabs they criticize Disney for is frustrating. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. <laughs> Palashi, thank you for the 100 bits. Do y'all have your picks for best picture yet? Oh, for 2023? I don't know. I because of the fatigue, I did, it took me out of a lot. Uh, I, I, holdovers is the one I think I gotta really, really see, because everyone's like, oh yeah, no, hands down, that's like the best film of the year, uh, which is impressive. I don't know how they're gonna top Godzilla, but. Yeah, Godzilla's in my can. top three. I don't know, Godzilla yeah. minus one, Barbie and Across the Spider-Verse are probably my mm. top three that I saw this year. Yeah, last year, did, rather. Uh, uh, did you see Holdover or no? No, Holdover. no, I didn't. Okay, not. yeah, no, I, I it is just the only movie where everyone I know who's seen is just like, yeah, no, they're right. It's the best film of the year. <laughs> Joel B, thank you for the 100 bits. Are you a fan of Ozploitation Cinema? If so, do you have a favorite film from this category? Uh, uh, spell it. O-Z-P-L-O-I-T-A-T-I-O-N. Sorry, I, I lost my place in the spelling. I was going to say, it's like, I feel like I can <laughs> write a little faster than this. Not quite how I was, but I have no idea what this is. Uh, we, uh, I will, I see Mad Max in there. The Wild of the Osportation. Uh, oh, like, uh, like an Australian thing? I don't know. I'm sorry. I, I'm just like, like no, no, no. usually I can, I wasn't I, I, laughing I can catch at you. out what this is, but I'm like, yeah. I looked at out of the corner of my eye. I looked at what that looked like in stream and it looks like you were getting ready to like eat me or kiss my forehead or something. Ah, you ah, like ah, leaned ah. right in. <laughs> um, I, I do not know what that is. There's a movie on it though. So I will uh, try to check it out. j thank you for the hundred bits. How much do you play Super Smash Bros and who's your go-to character? Um, I don't play it a lot anymore. I played a lot when I was... Uh, when I was in college. Um, who would I go to? Uh, I, I did play Fox a lot. I mean, there used to be a time I could be, I could play any character plot, but that's back when there was like, I don't know, 30, <laughs> something like that. Now it's like 130. So yeah, I can't do that. But um, I did play Pikachu quite a bit uh, as well. Uh, and then sometimes, um, yeah, and then Zelda and Link were, were pretty good. Yeah, I guess one of those. Queen Calibison, thank you for the 100 bits. Mm. A lot of people have a theory that Basil... And or Basil and Radigan are bitter ex-boyfriends. What are your thoughts? <laughs> it, it's a very fun theory. Um, probably has no place in truth, but um, it, it, it's fun to speculate on. FBL, thank you for the hundred bits. Would you rather live in Pawnee or Eagleton? Um, 
I guess. Remind Pawnee is Parks and Rec, and Rec. I don't what, know what Eagleton, Eagleton is. Pawn. Eagleton. Let me see. Uh, so Thomas Eagleton. Um, huh, sorry, Eagleton Town. Yeah, I'm Which not. Help. <laughs> yeah. I'm, uh, well, it is my. Uh, oh no, Eagleton's location to Pawnee. Explain. Oh, okay. So maybe it's in uh, Parks and Rec. Okay. Um, the rival town from Parks and Rec. Gotcha. Oh my God. Just oh. The... <laughs> I, I saw, oh, City of Eagleton, now entering Pawnee. Good luck with that. <laughs> oh, my God, that show is so funny. Um, Pawnee. Uh, uh, I'll still say Pawnee. <laughs> Get right. He's got Aubrey Plaza. Get right. Yeah, it's got one of the best casts of any sitcom ever. You got to say Pawnee. FBL, thank you for the 100 bits. What's the biggest shift in opinion you've had about a movie? Uh, I used to really not, like, Matilda, and I, I really came around to enjoying that film a great deal. Um, some of the Disney renaissance, and well, I mean, Disney movies in general, uh, anime ones, I feel like I was a little harsher on, and then looking back years later, I'm like, okay, I can see the appeal of this. Um, there's some I still, I feel like I have to see again. I do feel like I gotta see Hercules again. I do gotta see, like, Emperor's New Groove again, um, to see if they grew on me more uh because again I'm, I'm appreciating like just uniqueness more uh, the raimi spider-man movies grew on me a lot more when i watched them again because i'm just like now we have a million of these movies and it, it kind of helps them stand out a little bit more and be a little bit more unique uh you know they're doing stuff that no other spider-man movie you know would do because it's just so odd so uh yeah there's some for you Gary Turbo, thank you for the 100 bits. I know Doug is a huge mm. fan of Ralph Bashke and suggest his 1977 movie, Wizards. It's a post-apocalyptic science fantasy movie where an old dwarf wizard and his fairy lover gets dragged into a war started by his evil started by his evil twin. Uh, yeah, I've seen it. I really like it a great deal. Um, it is uh, it is one of those where you kind of have to know what you're getting yourself into. It does... Okay. It, the pro and con of it is that it constantly looks unfinished mm -hmm. um there's some scenes that are just gorgeous and amazing and other things where it's just like no that can't be that can't be finished that that can't be what was put on the big screen that can't have been played for an audience you know what i mean but that's part of the fun and part of the insanity of him and the world is kind of like that too where some things are grand and epic and some things just don't look finished um so if you know that going in, or maybe if you don't know that going in, um, it's a pretty interesting ride. It has one of my favorite uh, deaths of a villain ever. Um, it's just so unexpected. <laughs> Game Dust, thank you for the 100 bits. Any chance of a review sometime of the Christmas Story sequel, Ali Hopnoodle's Haven of Bliss? I did. I saw that when I was a kid. Um I remember liking it when I was a kid. I don't even know where I would see it now. Where can you even watch it? Uh, I doubt I ever got a DVD release. Um, I don't know. I wouldn't mind watching it again, because like I said, I, I remember uh, growing up with it. I actually saw that before Christmas Story. And real quick, because everyone's bringing it up, uh, that movie is where I got a family picture from, because that's what Bakshi would... He would describe this as a family picture, and there is literally naked women, people getting shot through the head, blood spew, there's Nazi propaganda, you know, like swastikas all over the place, and he keeps going, this is way away from family picture. So we just started quoting that whenever a movie would do something bonkers that was supposed to be a family picture. Demon Ayers, thank you for the 100 bits. Hey, Doug, did you see Chicken Run 2 on Netflix yet, and what did you think of it? No, I should check that out. Um, yeah, I, I liked the first one okay. I didn't love it, but I liked it, and uh, I heard the sequel's pretty good, so I should give it a watch. The Boom Bash, thank you for the 100 bits. What are your thoughts on the unbearable weight of massive talent? Oh, I liked it. I did a review of it. Um, it gets a little dull in the last third, but uh, just the acting from uh, Pascal and Cage is, uh, it's totally worth it. They are just, they are having a ball. <laughs> Alexander, thank you for the 100 bits. What are your thoughts on Keith David's president in Rick and Morty? In my opinion, he's the show's equivalent to Fish Odor. I always light up when he appears. Yeah, there, there's kind of a fun bonkers <laughs> way of doing things that uh, that character always does. Um, I love how quickly he talks, too. It's just everything's going on. He points over there. You, get that over there. Get this going over there. And he'll just say absolute insanity so quickly that uh, it almost sounds like it makes sense. But then it's like, wait, no, it clearly doesn't. Joel B., thank you for the 100 bits. Thoughts on the film 8 Mile and thoughts on Eminem as an artist? 
Um, Eminem's good. He, he's all right. I never quite got the huge fix. I mean, I got it. I understood it. It, it never quite grabbed me that much. But with that said, I did really like Eight Mile. Uh, I, I thought he did act very well in that to a point where I'm like, I know he said it's his only movie that makes sense and everything, but it was kind of a shame he's not going to do more because I, I thought he actually pulled that off pretty well. Jay Pitt, thank you for the 100 bits. What's a movie that's considered excellent but was a big one and uh, was a big one and done deal for you? Say it one more time. What's a movie that's considered excellent but was like a one and done deal for you? Oh, like it's amazing and then I never have to see it again? Yeah, yep. yeah. I think like I never want to One of the greatest films I've ever seen. Maybe it's about time I watch it again, but I don't know if I want to. Um, it's a brilliant movie, but it's like the most disturbing film I've ever seen. And it's called Happiness, ironically. And it is just so depressing and so disturbing and so uncomfortable. And just fuck it stays with you after you see it. Uh, and I just think to myself, man, I that's one of the greatest films I've ever seen. I never want to look at it again, <laughs> like ever again. Um, but but it is a it's so incredibly well done. But yeah, it is. Uh, if you've seen it, you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, Florida Project was another one where we, we thought it was going to be a little bit more upbeat and light. And we actually saw it on uh, Christmas Day. We were in between families and we had a few hours. So like, let's put this out. We thought it was going to be like the Sandlot. And uh, it ain't like the Sandlot. And it kind of ruined our Christmas because <laughs> we were so invested. And we felt so bad by the end that we were just, we go, we see family, we say hi, we talk, and we just, we would drive there and drive back just in silence and be like, I'm still thinking of that movie. <laughs> it's like, yeah, me too. <laughs> Joel B, thank you for the 100 bits. Aside from Smooth Criminal, what's your favorite Michael Jackson song? Um, man, let me think. Uh, trying to think of what one I can just put on and just be like, you know, like, yeah, it's got to be Thriller. Um, I was thinking, I was like, I'm trying to go for something that's not as cliche, but I'm like, nah, it's Thriller. It's pretty fucking cool. That Disney nerd, thank you for the 100 bits. I saw the Brendan Fraser Mummy movie for the first time. The third act is kind of fun, but the first two acts were a drag to get through for me. Um, yeah, it, it's weird. I, I don't hate those. Well, I, I don't hate that first movie by any means, but um, I'm kind of with you. Something needed to, something doesn't quite balance out with it. It's, it's always just, it's just a little too goofy and then not goofy enough at the same time. But, uh, but with that said, there's fun stuff in it, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. It, it never quite clicked for me. Some of the visuals are really cool, though. FBL, thank you for the 100 bits. Thoughts on To Live and Die in L.A.? Oh, I love it. Oh, my God. Uh, if you want to see what that movie could have been, look at the alternate ending of that film. It just almost completely destroys <laughs> the whole movie. Uh, but, yeah, oh, my God, that's one of those. Uh, any William Friedkin fan knows that movie and loves the hell out of it. <laughs> We're going to have to pick up the pace just a bit. Um, we're gotcha. almost an hour behind. Gotcha. Uh, FBL, thank you for the 100 bits. Thoughts on the Boondock Saints? I guess I liked it okay. I don't know. I, I, I kind of thought there'd be... I don't know if I want to say more or less to it. I don't know. It's, uh, it's all right, I guess. Joel B., thank you for the 100 bits. Any plans on doing an NC editorial for the Wallace and Gromit franchise? Maybe I could. Might be an idea. I, I have to see if I've seen them all. Sean, thank you for the 100 bits, and I know I'm going to mess this name up. Hey, Doug, in one of your earlier NCs, you remarked that you haven't seen Patrick McGuhan's series, The Prisoner. Have you seen it since then, and what are your thoughts? No, I, I hear it's pretty bizarre and really fun, but I haven't had a chance to see it. Jay Pitt, thank you for the 100 bits. This Christmas, I got introduced to this great 30s cartoon by Max Fleischer called Christmas Comes But Once a Year. Have you seen it? If not, definitely check it out as a lover of classic animation. I don't know if I, I've seen a lot of his Christmas cartoons. I don't know if I've seen that. Uh, I will look it up while we look at the next question. Jay Pitt, thank you for the 100 bits. Now it's my turn to be the Grinch of the evening. Kubo and the Two Strings had some of the best not, uh, stop motion I've ever seen, but man, I couldn't tell you the plot of that movie to save my life. <laughs> yeah, it's very complicated, but that, I followed it enough while watching it, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot going on. Uh, and I have seen that cartoon. It is very good. At Movies, thank you for the 100 bits. Disney December recommendations, Never Cry Wolf, 1983, Crimson Tide, 1995, Enemy of the State, 1998, The Finest Hour, 2016. Uh, 
Yeah, some of those I never even heard of. Uh, yeah, I might do Enemy of the State. That'd be a pretty fun one. Kermit Wazowski, thank you for the 100 bits. It's pretty cool to have grown up in the peak Nickelodeon era watching Keenan on All That, aka, aka SNL for Kids, and now seeing him thrive on SNL for Grown Ups. He's always been crazy talented, and his deliveries have been on point. Yeah, I agree. That's one of the... And again, he had great, great training with all that. Uh, you know, so I, I feel like you can't get better training <laughs> for that. It's literally the kid version of what's going to be your job later. Dark Lord, thank you for the 100 bits. Hello, everyone. Have you heard or seen that The Land Before Time is getting a 3D animated remake? Personally, out of all the Don Bluth films, Land Before Time should be at the bottom of the remake list, not the top as it apparently is. Yeah, I agree. Um, I mean, we'll see, but it, it sounds like a bad idea. <laughs> Queen Calypson, thank you for the 100 bits, and this is actually very, very helpful for the context of this. I must correct the record. The director who said she likes making men uncomfortable was saying that in the context of her documentary of honor killings of women in Pakistan, not Star Wars. Context! Context <laughs> makes a myself, huge I'm like, difference. I'm, just, I'm like, I just can't see Disney being behind this. <laughs> J. Bith, thank you for the 100 bits. We saw your review, La La Land, when it came out, but what did you think of Whiplash? I haven't seen it. God, this fucking stream. I haven't seen anything. I'm so sorry. Joel B., thank you for the 100 bits. Thoughts on Caitlin Dever being cast as Abby for The Last of Us Season 2? Uh, I did see the announcement. I wasn't terribly familiar with some of the stuff that she's been in. I know her from the movie version of Dear Evan Hansen. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, that's what I've seen her in before. As long as you can bulk up, you know, like also be prepared for the biggest amount of hate you'll ever feel on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I've seen her in a few things. I, I like, uh, who's she playing in the- Abby. Like, is she the uh, girlfriend? Abby is the yeah. big bulky woman in Last of Us Part Two. Oh, huh. I mean, she, I'm with you. She, she's pretty good, at, but they have- you know what? If she doesn't look the part, she's probably going to be fucking great. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the more I think about it, because uh, there's so many people I'm like, well, I don't know. I mean, they're great actors, but I don't know if they look the part. And then they're phenomenal. So it's like, you know what? Get, get the person that looks the least like the person and just go from there. Because, yeah, for whatever reason, they'll probably work. At Movies, thank you for the 100 bits. Sex, Mary kill. Cinderella, Belle, Tiana. Oh, uh, I guess kill Cinderella. She does the least. Um... <laughs> And uh, hmm, I, I guess uh, marry Tiana and then uh, fuck Belle because she likes to read and she would have read the Kama Sutra. FBL, thank you for the 100 bits. What movie would have been better and ha had it taken, sorry, had it taken fuller advantage of its premise? Oh, uh, you know, I brought Christmas with the Cranks before. Uh, I guess I'll go with that still. FBL, thank you for the 100 bits. There's a Seinfeld episode involving Joe Davola being harassed while dressed as a clown. It's funny to me that this also happened in the Joaquin Phoenix Joker movie. <laughs> yeah, it's a good point. At Movies, thank you for the 100 bits. Now, Heather, Sex, Mary Kill, Robin Hood, Aladdin, Shang. Um, hmm. I'm going to marry Shang because um, he seems like he'd be very loyal. Um, that leaves a sex and a kill. Um, I think I'm going to sex Aladdin. He's, he's got a lot of charisma, so I had to kill Robin Hood. I'm so sorry. I, I'm not going to lie. That took a little longer than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> Dark Lord, thank you for the hundred bits. On the topic of a variety of villains, I personally like the type of villain that's neither evil necessarily, but not sympathetic either. I like the type of villain that simply has a role to play that they stick to, especially if that role is to teach the protagonist a lesson. Example, Death from Puss in Boots 2. Or uh, maybe Q from Star Trek you might be thinking of, too. Yeah, I can see that. Movie Mike, thank you for the 100 bits. What do you think of the Warden from Shaw Shawshank? I don't know why I can never say that word. <laughs> do you think he's a good villain? I personally don't think so. See, to me, that's a movie that doesn't need a villain. I, I really like that movie, but uh, I don't like when they get into, like, the backstory and proving if he did it or didn't do it and stuff like that. I think that should have all been a mystery. Uh, I don't like that they pretty much spell out what really happened. Joel B., thank you for the 100 bits. Have you seen the 1994 film Quiz Show? It's one of the most underrated movies ever made, in my opinion. It, yeah, it is good. It's a very, very good movie. Uh, and you're right, not a lot of people talk about it, and they probably should. 
Queen Calypson, thank you for the 100 bits. I really hate how sequel era Star Wars portrays the New Republic as ineffectual and easily destroyed. It makes me feel like everything Luke, Leia, and Han fought for in the original trilogy was for nothing. I mean, that is my thing, uh, where I feel like if they were really going to create a new threat, they should have really experimented with it. But no, it's just... First Order is basically just in our empire. There's another emperor. There's a... And after seeing what they do with Thrawn in uh, Ahsoka, I'm kind of like, I kind of wanted this guy to be the threat, honestly. I, I think in the, what he created there, I, I think that would have been cooler uh, than the First Order. And just have, um, what's his name, Driver join them. <laughs> Joel B., thank you for the 100 bits. Original Star Wars trilogy or the Clone Wars series? <sighs> oh, fuck. I think I still got to say the original just because it, it has, I grew up with it. That was my introduction to it. it it's classic myth, um, but it's rough. And I think that's pretty impressive to say it, it, it's hard to choose between them. Dark Lord, thank you for the hundred bits. Hey Doug, whenever Kingdom Hearts 4 comes out, how many sips of your drink do you think you're going to take from the mentions of Sora, Donald, and Goofy? Although considering how it seems set up, you may need to expand it where it isn't exclusively Sora. <laughs> um... Yeah, maybe. It'll be like uh, that Once Upon a Studio. They'll just name every Disney character. Sora, Donald, Moana, Tiana, Belle. I'll tell you, that just goes through like everybody. <laughs> Honest Reviewer, thank you for the 100 bits. With the Phantom Menace 25th anniversary coming up this summer, can we finally get that AI-generated special review around <laughs> the time? Maybe. You know, it's funny because I've been experimenting with, like, AI imagery. I just, when I got sick, I was telling Heather this, actually sort of like generating some images on AI, some abstract, like just, I don't know. I want to do a video on this because I think it's interesting. But uh, I kind of used it as art therapy a little bit, like, you know, like maybe people swimming through space or something like that. These very calming images. So I'm actually really, really fascinated by all that. I don't know much about the writing side of it yet. The AI uh, generated like text and stuff like that. So I still got to look into that because I tried it. I wasn't really following it yet, but uh, I will try to look into it more. FBL, thank you for the 100 bits. Has the way you were introduced to a movie affected how you felt about the movie? For me, I was in a high school creative writing class and basically force-fed movies like Shaw Shawshank, which made me dislike the movie. Even now, mm -hmm. I think it's fine, but really overrated. Uh, the movie Gettysburg, for whatever reason, both my brother and my dad watched over and over and over. And it just ruined the movie for me. The soundtrack, too, because they listened to the soundtrack over and over and over, and it ruined the soundtrack. And then I watched it years later. I'm like, okay, this actually is a very, very good film. <laughs> but, yeah, it's one of those where, uh, it, yeah, just because I was overexposed to it so much, it was always on in the house. Uh, I really hated that film for a while. Fire Tower, thank you for the 100 bits. Have you seen the 2001 sci-fi comedy film Evolution? And if so, your thoughts? Uh, no, I hear it's bad. It's always on the list to get to at some point, but I don't know if enough people even remember it now. So uh, I guess that's my thing. I remember so you don't have to. So uh, maybe I'll get to it at some point. At Movies, thank you for the 100 bits. And C for Meet the Robinsons. Um... Maybe? I did Disney Sember on it. I feel like that was enough. I could kind of sum it up there well enough um yeah i don't know if i have a passion to talk about it joel b thank you for the hundred bits thoughts on the deer hunter probably one of my all-time favorite war movies one of the best showings of war <laughs> trauma and a great performance by walk-in yeah the my only issue i feel like the wedding could have been shorter <laughs> that's a really long wedding i know the idea that you're setting up the people getting to know them and stuff but uh it's a really long wedding <laughs> Dark Lord, thank you for the 100 bits. Hey, Doug, did you know that Mimi dance was made into an emote in Destiny 2 at some point? You think maybe you should have trademarked the dance and to get some easy money out of Bungie. What? No, oh, they're they're doing the the it dance. I'm sure I'm sure it's just the Pennywise uh, dance. Right, right. Doug didn't come up with that dance to begin with. So Yeah, no, we're mimicking <laughs> Pennywise doing that. FBL, thank you for the 100 bits. Thoughts on the Eddie Murphy slash Martin Lawrence movie Life? I never saw it, because that's just how the stream is going. <laughs> that Disney nerd, thank you for the 100 bits. Just want to wish you, Heather, and of course, your technology, good luck. Hopefully no tech issues delay the stream. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I, I mean, she, she, she fucking saved Friday's stream. I know we started late, but we just wouldn't even have a stream. It wasn't for her, man. Yeah, so I'm very thankful for that. <laughs> FBL, thank you for the 100 bits. Have you been watching season two of the Night Court reboot? I haven't even seen season one. Um, I guess it's supposed to be good. Uh, 
I mean, I like the original fine, but I guess I have no interest in the reboot. But I guess some people are saying it's pretty decent. So uh, I guess I'll try to check it out. Fat Dizzy Nerd, thank you for the 100 bits. Have you seen either of these Leica films, Missing Link or Box Trolls? If you have, what did you think? I saw Box Trolls. I really like it. it Remind me of one of those like weird 80s movies where it just kind of get distracted by the weirdest things and just sort of be focused on that. Uh, so I really like that. Um, I never saw Missing Link. I'm told I'm not missing much with it. Not missing much with Missing Link. <laughs> Joel B, thank you for the 100 bits. How would you rank these Aardman films? Chicken Run, Wallace and Gromit, Curse of the Were Rabbit, and Flushed Away. Also, thank you, Doug. I don't feel so bad about disliking Dead Poet Society. Love Peter Weir's other films, though. I agree. He's a great director. Absolutely. Um, I uh, I, th I think I like Flushed Away the most, actually. I thought that was the most unique out of them. Uh, then probably, probably Wallace and Gromit and then Chicken Run, but it's pretty close. I can't consider them on the same uh, wave. Alexander, thank you for the 100 bits. What are your thoughts on the two movies Paul Newman and Robert Redford starred in together, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid and The Sting? I never saw The Sting. I did see uh, uh, Sundance. And I mean, I like it like everyone. Does. Rob always talks about it's a good movie, but it's just, it's so 70s. Like just that, got that 70s, you know, like someone just took raw 70s and smeared it all over the lens. You know what I mean? I know yeah. what he's talking about, uh, but I think that just gives it more charm. FBL, thank you for the 100 bits. Go to steak order. Go to steak order. Um, oh, you know, my brother, uh, my brother made beef wellington for the first time. It was one of the best mm -hmm. things to ever had, man. Phenomenal. FBL, thank you for the 100 bits. Um, fuck, Mary kill, Ron Swanson, Andy Dwyer, Ben Wyatt. Uh, I, I know the first one, hold on. Andy Wire or Dwyer? Andy Dwyer. These are all uh, Parks and Rec oh, characters. Okay. I, I These are all Parks and Rec name. characters. Okay, and then yeah, who's yeah, the yeah. last one? Ben Wyatt. So Ron Swanson, you know. Andy is yeah. um, Chris, Chris Pratt. Pratt's character, and Ben Wyatt is... Um... Oh, uh, I'd probably kill Ben Wyatt. He's the most boring out of all of them. Um, probably, uh, I mean, fuck Chris Pratt, because come on, it's Chris Pratt. <laughs> and then, uh, oh yeah, fucking Mary uh, Swanson, man, because he's... He's a provider. He's a protector. He'll look after me. FBL, thank you for the 100 bits. Thoughts on the movie Anomalisa? I loved it. I know a lot of people that didn't like it, but uh, I thought it was phenomenal and really pushed what uh, what stop motion can do, a different type of stop motion. I thought the idea was very clever. Um, yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. I guess I'm not that surprised when somebody doesn't, though. Dark Lord, thank you for the 100 bits. Hey, Doug, ever played this old Disney game called Maui Mallard in Cold Shadow? It's basically Donald Duck playing a character named Maui Mallard playing a ninja character called Cold Shadow, or in the words of RDJ, he's a dude playing a dude disguised as a dude. <laughs> I've seen the cover, and explaining that actually helps, because I do always remember seeing that, but what the hell is this game about? FBL, thank you for the 100 uh, bits. Thoughts on the deleted Joker scene from the Batman? Should they have kept it in? No, I, I'm with Heather. Keep keep the Joker out of it. We have enough Joker. I can't believe that was the guy from Saltburn, though. I just found that mm. out. That fucking fascinated me. Keith Creature, thank you for the 100 bits. Sorry if this is a difficult question, but I was wondering, when you found out you were trending on YouTube and Twitter for your wall review, what went through your head? <laughs> wow, people love it. Um, <laughs> You know, we've been doing this for, I mean, now about 17 years. To have things go that well for so long and only I, I guess not now it's about five years old but only then have a big explosion like that a big bomb like that and stuff like that i think that's a pretty good run it, it, it's bound to happen and you gotta you gotta take it you gotta bomb sometimes every comedian will tell you that so um yeah you know it, got through it okay i wish it did better obviously but um yeah you, you learn from it that's that's how you learn you know from your mistakes Darth Payne, thank you for the 100 bits. Hi, Doug and Heather. Do you think made-for-TV movies are a lost art? Sometimes my mind pack pops back to this one about Attila the Hun starring Gerard Butler, Powers Booth, and Tim Curry. Um, I mean, they're still around. They're just streaming now, right. I feel like. Uh, yeah, it's just changed a little bit. Joel B., thank you for the 100 bits. Which 2009 sci-fi film do you prefer, Avatar or District 9? In my opinion, they are both gorgeous films, although I wish the main characters were more likable. Sully was boring, and Wickes is just annoyed the fuck out of me. I don't like either of them, but I guess I would say Avatar because the world is so pretty. 
Joel B, thank you for the 100 bits. Have you ever played a game called Detroit Become Human? It's one of my all-time favorite games of all time. Uh, just a little bit, enough to know what it's like and what it's about. Um, that, that might be a fun one to stream. I think we put that on the list at some point, an interesting one to maybe look at. I think so. Yeah. Fire Tower, thank you for the 100 bits. Have Hears or Seen Kid Nation, a 2007 reality show with 40 kids spend 40 days in a desert town, no parent to win, let's say under $50,000. I heard about it. Everyone says it's like the worst reality show ever made, uh, I think. Um, it sounds like it. Joel B, thank you for the 100 bits. Which Rocky film do you prefer, Rocky 3 or 4? 3, though 4 is pretty fun for how bonkers it is. FBL, thank you for the 100 bits. Thoughts on American Horror Story? I didn't get into it, um, but I... But I, I think I didn't get into the first season, so I got a different idea of what it was about. And then everybody says I should give it another chance. So um, I don't know. Maybe I will. I it, like the shorts. They they did this series where they run a bunch of American Horror Story shorts. I like those more. I love it, but it's so hit or miss. It's either legitimately good, terrible, or so terrible that it's amazing and I can't look away. There's <laughs> no, like It's one of those three things, and I just can't get enough of it. Honest Reviewer, thank you for the 100 bits. Speaking of Fat Albert, Kyla Pratt, now that's a name I've not heard in a long time, the only actor to appear in every Dr. Doolittle movie, including the direct-to-video ones, because <laughs> Raven Simone was too busy doing a road trip film with Big Mama. Huh, that's funny. Um, yeah, that was, I mean, so... I didn't see much of the Proud Family, but I know that voice enough. So whenever she was talking in that movie, I'm just like, I, I, I'm just hearing the girl from Proud Family. FBL, thank you for the 100 <clears throat> bits. Oh, hi, critic. By the way, how is your sex life? <laughs> uh, um, imaginary water. There you go. Alexander, thank you for the 100 bits. What are your thoughts on the Happy Feet movies? I only saw the first one. I really... Liked it a lot. Uh, it was not what I was expecting. And uh, it was actually kind of a grand epic movie for such a silly plot. Uh, yeah, I actually liked it quite a bit. I didn't see the second one. At Movies, thank you for the 100 bits. Any films you liked at one point that you like less now? Um, sure there are, but I'm blanking on them. Uh, a lot of films I grew up with, you know, like, and I, I can't say these are bad, but I used to love them. And I watched, you know, like the Ninja Turtles movie, I kind of look back. I'm like, this is a little, I can't say this all works. The Bakshi Lord of the Rings is the same thing, but I still like them. Uh, but in terms of do they work, that's a little difficult to say. At Movies, thank you for the 100 bits. Are you looking forward to the Wolfman remake this year? It's by the guy who made Upgrade and The Invisible Man 2020. Ooh. Oh, oh man. Okay, you got me excited for that. For that, 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 that guy does great stuff. Um, okay, I am now. <laughs> that Disney nerd. Thank you for the hundred bits. Final question for me: Rank these Disney main songs from worst to best. I see the light, a whole new world, circle of life, and part of your world. Um, try part of your world first. A whole new world. Uh, once I see the. What's I see the light? I don't Tangled. Think I know and oh. first I see and, the light. And what was the other one? Um, a whole circle of life. Oh, sir. Oh, uh, yeah. And then circle of life, and then I see the light. FBL, thank you for the hundred bits. Thoughts on Abbott Elementary? Um, uh, I've only seen a little bit. What I saw, I wasn't liking. I did the acting was good, but I I wasn't a fan of the writing. Balashi, thank you for the 100 bits. Doug, not trying to make you feel worse, but how have you not seen Whiplash? It's amazing. Uh, I'm just a dick. Modica, thank you for the 100 bits. Doug, have you read this little book called the Bible? Uh, Bible? No, but it's on my list. So I don't want to add. <laughs> I mean, it's got, I haven't read the whole thing. <laughs> Haunted Joker, thank you for the 100 bits. Can't remember if I sent this one. Pop quiz, again, hot shot for 100 bits. What was the only rated X movie to win Best Picture at the Oscars? Man, I'm trying to... I used to know this. I can't remember. I'm blanking. I did used to know, but if I can't... Yeah, I don't know. Um, Midnight Cowboy. Is That's the right. That's right. Which is in our film, I have not seen. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. And it's a classic. <laughs> Great. Love that. Honest reviewer, thank you for the 100 bits. So have you guys heard about how SAG-AFTRA signed up with an AI voice studio to be used in video games? Many VAs feel like the industry is screwing them over once again. As the old saying goes, as more things change, the more they stay the same. Um, 
I, I mean, I, I'm hearing it from a Disney. I think I heard it from uh, the last stream too. Um, it doesn't sound good. I'm not an expert on it, but just the little I know it. Um, it doesn't sound good. No, it doesn't sound great. But but I have a little bit of a hot take with this. I won't take long to explain it. Um, but basically, it's not good. So don't read what I'm saying mm -hmm. as good. It it's good. But I do appreciate that SAG AFTRA is trying to get ahead of the curve with AI voice acting, and so it really is setting in place some rules and regulations about mm. um having actors be consenting and uh, the payment structure that is for that type of deal, um, as well as like having to be paid for sequels and things like that if they're used in those games as well. So I'm not saying it's good, but it is nice that SAG is trying to get ahead of the curve and set some of those ground rules for something that's kind of inevitable at this point. Yeah, that's true. It's like it's pointing down at least something. Right, you know. right, exactly. Blake the Nothing, thank you for the 100 bits. Evening, y'all. Gene Siskel used to end his interviews with the same question, what do you know for sure? And that's my question for both tonight. You know, I did know that question. Um, it's a very good question to ask. And I thought, well, how would I? Because it's like, what do I know? I mean, this could all be an illusion. We could all be in a simulation. I don't know. Um, I know I feel very happy. That, that, that I know for sure. I know for sure that I am loved and cared for. And valuable. Um, Joel B, thank you for the hundred bits. Have you seen the film Once Upon a Time in America? I'm a little curious to watch it, but it's near four hours long, and that scares me. It is worth it, and it goes by fast. Like when I, I, I thought, like maybe ten minutes passed. I looked at the watch; it was forty five minutes. I'm like, holy shit! This and see the four hour one because the condensed one is supposed to be really, really bad. I saw the four hour one; it is worth it. It is very, very good. Sean, thank you for the hundred bits. Talking of reboots, can you freaking believe they want to do another Battlestar Galactica? And did you see the other versions? <laughs> what do you think? No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> FBL, thank you for the hundred bits. And I can't, I, I hope you say no to this. Thoughts on the El Pacino movie Cruising. Have you seen it? beautiful they're doing this on purpose now how do they know all the movies i've never seen <laughs> the consistency is amazing yeah uh kp thank you for the hundred bits have you checked out the trailer for cabrini it's being released march 8th and is based off the life of saint francis xavier cabrini and the resistance she faced after immigrating to new york from italy to do missionary work uh boy that that sounds familiar I, the, the title didn't sound familiar but when you said that i'm like i feel like i've seen this trailer uh and it did look uh pretty good uh oh yeah no okay i i just didn't know it was called that uh yeah i thought it looked good zekrom thank you for the hundred bits just a question is there a reason why you never did an nc of the other children of the corn movies big fan seeing you since the food fight nc you did all those years ago oh thank you so much um i mean maybe i should that one does weirdly well that's like maybe one of our top five most watched ones so uh <laughs> maybe i should do the sequels Alexander, thank you for the 100 bits. I remember you mentioning in an earlier stream that you actually preferred the William Friedkin TV remake of 12 Angry Men. I recently watched it, and I'm curious why. Don't get me wrong. The cast's acting is great, but I don't see much variation between the two versions. What elevated past the original for you? Well, I, I think you nailed it, because they are made at different times. Both the acting of both of them are, are good, but that one, I think so much of it relies on feeling like you're actually in that room, feeling the heat, feeling the tension from everybody. And because it's such a good director, it was more modernized, for like a better way of putting it. Uh, you felt more like you were in that room, even though the original's great. Uh, I And I just love all those actors. I mean, those are some of my favorite actors ever in one room. So uh, yeah, I, I really liked it. Joel B, thank you for the 100 bits. Have you ever heard of a game called Until Dawn? It's so much fun. It would be a fun streaming th during Halloween. Well, we have it as a possible game at one point. Because uh, I, yeah, it, yeah I, I did hear about it. I hear it's uh, pretty fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, and we did it. Woo! We have like three minutes to look Alrighty. at some highlighted messages. Um, Elite Gamer says, hey, 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 hiya, Heather and Doug. Hope you're both doing well. I was wondering, what's one NC review you would go back and redo? Also, Doug, Chaplin's your boss now. Um, you know, it's funny because people say, what ones are you disappointed in? What ones are you blah, blah, blah? But in terms of redo, honestly, I would redo the wall. Um, because I think we were in, in, 
we were in a transitional point where we were kind of like, yeah, let's mostly do jokes and, you know, a little analytical, but I was kind of transitioning there. So I think people was t were taking what I was saying very literal, and I did want to be a little bit more abstract. So I think people not surprisingly thought I was saying stuff with that I wasn't trying to say or get across. I was doing it more just for jokes. And um, and some of the people involved did, ah, you know, like, like it did hurt when the backlash came and stuff like that. I can take that. I know that's just part of the business and everything, but other people, I really worked hard on it. Like, you know, I kind of hurt them. So it's like, that's something I don't want anyone to, you know, be hurt and stuff like that. So that is one I would go back and, and probably do it different. Dark Lord, thank you for the 100 bits. If you ever try out Final Fantasy 15, I also recommend checking out its anime, Final Fantasy 15 Brotherhood, and its movie, Kingsglaive, as they act as somewhat prequels to the game. All right, keep that in mind. Spike, thank you for the 100 bits. Doug hasn't seen the biggest movies all, of all time, but by God, he's seen Rhapsody Street Kids. Hey, to yeah. defend Doug on this one, I don't know any of these movies either. <laughs> I don't think they're the biggest movies of all time. Like, uh, Whiplash so, so, is kind of, of a more popular one, but some of these titles that y'all are throwing out. <laughs> uh, so, 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 some of them are pretty big. <laughs> Honest reviewer, thank you for the 100 bits. Um, you had a hard time thinking of a bad actor in the Little Mermaid remake? Are we forgetting Javier Bardem's legendary oh, sleepwalking performance? Yeah, yeah, that's it. He was worse than uh, McCarthy. Yeah, by far, he was the worst. You're right. Uh, Spooky Elephant says, most satisfying villain death. The governor in Walking Dead is up there for him. Um, oh, um, them, Joffrey. Sorry. Yeah, Joffrey just felt so good <laughs> in Game of Thrones. Ramirez says, another character to help me through something was Miles Morales. I lost my grandfather and dog in 2018 and saw Into the Spider-Verse that December, and I loved it. Better than The Incredibles 2? I think so. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but it's also, I don't know, Spider-Verse has almost entered like a legendary stance by this point. That's like saying, you know, better than Snow Dogs? I think so. It's like, well, yeah, it's Spider-Verse. <laughs> Uh, Glitch Crazed says, hey, Doug, any chance you'll review the other Percy Jackson movie or maybe the remaining Dire of a Wimpy Kid films for Nostalgia Critic? Uh, maybe the second Percy Jackson, because uh, people responded pretty well to that. Um, Dire of a Wimpy Kid, I just didn't get that into. And I don't know, like people saw it, but it wasn't like a huge deal. So like, I don't have a passion to really talk about uh, the follow ups. Um, Bat Dance says, hey, Doug, do you miss cell animation? I feel like it's a lost art that has yet to be replicated by digital tools. Oh, yeah. Uh, I will say this. They're getting better at recreating uh, the feel of it because I hate it when they would do like something that's clearly like kind of half CG and half hand drawn and they would have like, I don't know, computer fill in the in between spots and it just it looks so CG to me, but they're getting better at it now. And then you look at something like has been hotel and uh, hell of a boss and stuff like that, where like they really are doing those, you know, frame by frame. Uh, and it just, you can tell the difference. It looks spectacular. Uh, so, but if you're talking about cell, like actually, you know, uh, uh, physically, you know, uh, doing that and everything. Yeah. Um, but digital hand drawn looks pretty good too. It's uh, I, I wish there was room for both. I know why they're doing the other way around because it's faster and does save money. All right, cool. And that brings us to eight o'clock. Thank Ooh. you all so, so much as usual for joining us. Um, again, in case you didn't hear, there is going to be a stream on Friday. So please do come back for Friday evening. Please come back. Um, but Doug will be on vacation for the next two weeks. Um, so for the next two Wednesdays, there will not be a QA. and a oh, unless I wrangle other people. You know what? Maybe I shouldn't yeah, say that. Good. What if good. I wrangle other people? You know what? Yeah, maybe I should text it. like Tamara and Walter. You know, maybe yeah, we'll do that. Come on. <laughs> you know what? Maybe I rescind what I've said. Maybe I'll text <laughs> some people, okay? <laughs> maybe. I'll take it back. <laughs> um. Anyway, come back. We do have content here five days a week, usually. Um, so we'll be here on Thursday. We'll be here on Friday. We'll be here on Monday, etc. 
etc cetera, etc cetera. um we are going to go raid miss tamra chambers um who some of you might know um from this little show called the nostalgia cricket i think it is um so yeah, you're right you're right yeah, okay, great, great, great. Thank you, Doug. I'm glad that you confirmed that. Um, so we're going to go raid her and say hello. Um, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your evening, and we will see you all later. Bye! -bye. Bye, -bye. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye.